All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Super Metroid Zelda 3 TV2 Grand Finals. Uh, coming from the Losers bracket, we have uh, Andy and Ivan representing. Do I have to read this? Yes. Uh, okay, Andy and Ivan are representing Team Parts. And coming from the winner's bracket, we have Solsky and Kofi, uh representing Crockpot. Uh, these are the uh, uh, two and one seeds, respectively. So uh, the projected finals matchup. Uh, Crockpot really, really strong in this. Uh, I don't think they... They haven't lost a game all tournament. I'm not sh They didn't lose any of the qualifiers either. I'm not sure they've lost any of the practice races since the tournament started either. <laughs> Um, so, uh, should be interesting match to see if, uh, Andy and I can finally take one from these guys. If they do, then, uh, we'll have, uh, the bracket reset game at the same time tomorrow. Uh, so I'm joined by Apathy Duck. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, good. Uh, really excited to see this. Um, it's always a good matchup, uh, when these two teams do oh. practice races and such. Except for the last, the last match was that we had a couple of gravity and stupid locations uh, in the last couple weeks, and uh, their first matchup was one of those. So, hopefully, a little more straightforward. See, not just a kind of a dumb item hunt thing. Uh, but yeah, like I would, I would say this is the most unsurprising, surprising finals. Like you said, it was it was one and two. Uh, it's random though, so the fact that neither of these guys ended up getting upset. Like, there's a lot of strong teams. Your team. Uh, obviously, one of the better teams. Uh, we had, you know, Plasma Go Burr. We had, uh, we had a lot of good teams. So, but yeah, it's it's one and two. So not entirely surprising. Ooh, we got look at this. We got matching Samish rights here. Yeah, it really depends. So Ivan bonked the door. Uh, not a great start for these guys. Yeah. That that door is the final boss of this game. <laughs> I had to point that out. Um, so yeah. Uh, the usual play is you send one person down to the blue bin to do these two checks because it is in logic, uh, just to make sure. Um, and yeah, so on the topic of upsets, I feel like in a lot of ways it's harder to pull off upsets in the co-op because um, co-op is very dependent on uh, both people both people's skill levels and also them working really well together as a team. Oh, wow, we have Varia uh, Blueprint. That's why you go down here. There's stuff down here that could be in logic without you coming here otherwise. Yeah, Varia and Har, though, could mean absolutely nothing. Like, well, I guess it's eventually lower Norfair, but like just five E tanks puts it in. So uh, still a nice thing to have. They don't really have to. I think actually one of the things that gets you is, uh, at least for us with co op, is we were always concerned about ammo and E tanks pre Varia and pre charge. Um, so it pretty much removes the E tank worry for both these teams. Oh, oh okay. Okay. we've got a morph ball. Never mind. Okay, early morph ball too. So yeah, uh, with Death Mountain access, actually, it's going to be <laughs> Upper Norfair already. That's, I know that's kind of power bomb, but yeah, we should find one soon. I know there's a couple teams that um, they don't like sending a player down to Blue Brain at the start. Um, they'll just both go to Zelda, um, and like I personally think that actually makes it a bit harder to split up your openers in Zelda. But. Yeah, Zelda, the problem with Zelda is like pretty much everything right in Zelda requires a bomb or money, to, <laughs> money for bombs usually. Um, so like, like we would even keep bombs if Cutie found bombs down here, just three three Zelda bombs, he'd keep it uh, because it was just so valuable early on. So yeah, you, you really reduce the Zelda checks you can do early on. Um, so it makes sense. I mean, uh, I guess the counter argument to that is like, if you're playing solo, actually the, the early Brinstar check isn't really the, a big meta play, so it kind of makes sense to not send both guys, both players down. But yeah, the fact that you just don't have bombs it really hurts it. So, uh, but the big thing it's it's meta. So uh, at least for the co-op tournament. Yeah, like for co-op, and this is one of the things that I was talking about when I was saying it's harder to pull off upsets in this because um, the general premise of co-op is you have both players available um, to cover ground. So. Uh, pretty much everyone is going to send one player to an incompletable Eastern Palace at the start, uh, not worrying about whether there's anything in it or not. It just gets it out of the way while the other player uh, can focus on finding 
the actual progression. Just to make sure you don't miss things in places. Yeah, I'm I'm still not a big fan of the... It depends on what you find. Especially like Morph and Varia, I would try to avoid uh, Eastern here. But a lot, yeah, a lot of times, just if you don't find a lot of stuff early, uh, you run out quickly and then someone, someone usually ends up doing Eastern. But uh, I'd still prefer to avoid it if, if at all possible. Hmm. I, I found it um, a rarity for uh, for my team to be able to skip it or for it to be reasonable to skip. Uh, but I guess that's another thing that like some teams will have different opinions on. Yeah, there's. I mean, it, we're we're. I mean, this is the first couple of minutes. We're kind of in the weeds here, but yeah, there's a bunch of minor. I, I definitely agree that upsets are less likely. But again, it's not like of the top like five teams. It's not like Team Farts was miles better than anyone. Um, you know, it wasn't so. Uh, yeah. We've got a sorry. We've got a fleet at uh, blind set, and there is a sword in Lumberjack apparently. Um, oh boy, one of the best places for it. <laughs> Uh, two supers in blindside as well, which is uh, a good start with that early morph ball. Another super in chicken. Nut, so they'll, have, they'll pretty much all have three supers. Yeah, and there's no real like on this on these four guys. There's no real like specializations here. I mean, Andy's obviously the only to the past runner. Aussie's uh, very good SM runner, but even that he's he's excellent at only to the past. Ivan more of an SM, but they're all pretty. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, but they're all end up being pretty close. There's another sword. Well, I guess our only sword, we're not getting the Lumberjack one. Yeah. <laughs> Unlikely uh, I, that we ever get that one. Yeah, that's that would be an extreme emergency grab. Uh, in solo, I could see not finding another sword for the rest of the game. And uh, maybe deciding to pull the trigger on doing Aga for that sword at the end of the game. Uh, that's what it comes down to sometimes in solo, but in co-op, you're going to find the other swords. Yeah, unless there's like a sword on tablet or something, that'd be really bad. Uh, so the flute that they found uh, makes the early game routing uh, faster to clean up and uh, somebody deciding to go in the direction of Eastern. You're not necessarily committed uh, to going all the way into the dungeon. You could just do Sahasrila, which I think is what Aussie did. Or actually, no, Aussie just went there at the start, I think. There is another option for that sword and co-op uh, that you see sometimes. It's pretty rare, but um, if you have, like, late Dark World access, but you have, like, the Pearl and, like, a hookshot or something. Uh, I've seen it where teams will, will send someone just to get the Dark World, especially if SM is becoming kind of linear. Uh, you do waste a little time from one player doing that, but especially if someone ends up being a little ahead. Uh, it is a play you can, can opt to make. Are you talking about uh, doing Aga? Yeah, just doing one person doing Aga so they can get the Dark Roll, and they know they're basically going to get a sword as a bonus reward for it, so that's not a terrible decision in this seed, um, depending on how you know it plays out. Like, if they just get Dark World, then obviously not, but uh, if they have a late Dark World, uh, I could see someone, one of the teams saying, okay, let's just go to Dark World, that person will get a free sword too, basically, at some point. Um, yeah, that's also dependent on boots showing up since boots are required yeah, yeah, true, for the lumberjack item. Uh, we have a green pendant desert, uh, so uh, a desert is one of the uh, one of the major possible uh, boot lock uh, for a dungeon completion. So if we don't have to beat desert, then boots may not factor in. We might not end up getting them until very late. Uh, there is uh, Salty seeing a Bombos medallion on the desert ledge floating over here. Oh, it's two medallions already. Yeah, I didn't see where Ether was, but uh, these are all pretty free early game checks. I want to say it was like back of Lion's Head or something. I don't have you seen a power bomb yet? Because we have morph. Uh, generally, you don't want to go before power bombs, though. Um, it's hard to uh, it's hard to catch uh, Back a well, the minor a ammo beat. items. Yeah, if we got one already, um, I assume people are just being Toro uh, for the first spear of Zelda checks, just for the sake of it. Yeah, also, uh, like going in with five, you can't really do Brynloop. You can do... There's actually a way of doing co-op with Brynloop. Uh, if, you're, if you split it up, you'll be able to uh, clear everything. Um... But the other option is just opening like crate or something. You can always get the crate with five and clear everything out. Yeah. So Andy making uh, the first trip into the castle, I think, uh, 
since he's now going in that direction with the sword. Yeah, with early sword, you can clear it out. Let's see if he opts to clear everything out. Nope, he's just going to do the front. Uh, that was another pack of power bombs, so... Yeah, that uh, was another pack one. So he's in better shape to go to Super Metroid after this. Yeah, he may have he may have been considered doing breaking back, but that first PB may have changed his mind because he can just do SM now with ten. Did she just say breaking bad? I might have. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> breaking back. Stepped on a crack. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's. That's an interesting play. Um, if he steal that guard's P and you go all the way to the back of escape with it. Um, yeah, look, Ivan's coming here just for that PB. Yeah, uh, you're I guaranteed to be refunded on the key. Because uh, if you didn't find it in the map chest, then, or, then it will be somewhere along the path to the back. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Ivan actually... Uh, does the back here because he's going to get the power bomb and he can just go straight to the back especially because Andy will have this yep has this completely scouted uh, so Ivan getting this PB and then doing back is an option let's see what he does oh Ivan doing left slash <laughs> yeah that looks okay that's this is a, a pretty good smart call by these guys Ivan wants the power bomb they know uh, Ivan knows that he can just do the back now because he doesn't have to do anything else uh, he's going to have this uh, entirely cleared out. The only issue of doing this is, like, the back is really free to clear with gloves. Uh, so you are uh, giving up a little opportunity cost there, but it's it's pretty minor. Meanwhile, Aussie is the first one into SM, followed closely by Andy. Yeah, Andy going straight to moat. Um, maybe you know, do, like, one try at the CWJ, but I guess just Not picking the item. Yeah, I like peeking the item. A lot of times I'll one-try the CWJ and just to check West Ocean. I'm not for any plans to even do wreck ship. Yeah, so Ivan is breaking the back of escape with the, the key, since he knows he doesn't need uh, anything in the basement. Um, yeah. the, the other thing, like you mentioned, uh, the glove could um, make this play a lot faster if it shows up later. Um, the other thing that I don't like about this is that um, if something crazy like one of the gloves is back here, um, Andy can't do this play. But actually, it's fine because the key showed up in Dark Cross, so he would be able to go this way. Yeah, actually, I don't think that's a big deal for co-op because it actually sort of naturally splits up the two runners. Uh, you know, Ivan would start doing a bunch of glove checks, Andy would do everything else. Uh, a lot of times when that happens, like when one player snags something like that, especially if the other player can't get it for one of those reasons, uh, it ends up just, <laughs> the seed ends up splitting up a lot nicer. Uh, interesting that Aussie's starting, I, I'd like Kraid up. The problem is he has no way of actually getting up Red Tower right now that I s have seen. Um, so he's just going to do Kraid. Like, he's going to kind of weirdly isolate, like, Spazer and Red Tower, unless he just goes over to Spazer and comes back. Yeah, um, we'll have to go back down the elevator, probably, which um, it's not a very fast back and forth uh, yeah. to go up and down the elevator. That's why I don't understand. Like, if I have something, if I have, like speed or. Oh, uh, he I didn't jump. get crit quick kill. Oh, my God. This is the grand finals. Uh, to be fair, I don't think he got his crit quick kill in his RBO run either when he had like second place before uh, Zos got world record. So, I, I yeah. suppose that does happen sometimes. It, it happens with some very good uh, any percent times as well. Yeah, it, it happens to, to everyone, but we are still going to make fun of him for it. So oh, Andy's going to check Spazer because he is yeah, coming I just, from Red Tower. Without having something to go up Red Tower, I just like doing down or ship down to create better than just going straight to create. I'm not quite sure of this routing from Aussie here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy's, Andy's routing is working out better, I think. Um, okay, just a super. A uh, decent amount of supers early game, though. Um, the other thing I don't like as much about Aussie's play is that um, Crate isn't very dense uh, in terms of raw time for checks. Um, it's not, but you have to do it, and like 
speeds like the only thing that ever speeds it up and not by that much so it's you're, you're getting a boss done like I, I i don't mind beelining crate and then like especially in co-op your partner can just do it whenever right There's yeah a lot of it's good just, times to do it with either a dragon or a ridley it's just kind of the informational um aspect i tend to value more in co-op i actually like now that we're commentating i feel like we're uh, actually disagreeing on a lot of we, uh, we disagree on a lot of a lot of stuff actually we disagreed uh, about the uh, beta power bombs and bingo too. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty interesting though. Actually, I, I always feel like you're you're like very anti-meta on a lot of stuff. Like you have your own way of uh, thinking about a lot of stuff, and like you're generally like that's not like I'm saying it's wrong or anything. It's just I feel like you break the mold on a lot of things, and it's one of the reasons why you're a strong player in some of these. Yeah, it, it does bite me sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah, you're you either knock it out of the park or you <laughs> quit. <laughs> That's one of the two. Uh, so Ivan and also well, there's those boots front of gauntlet. Oh my god! Okay, did Ivan? Okay, Ivan did get. Oh, we just missed it, so we already knew about that. Oh my god! Two missed this. <laughs> I'm gonna no, he, he got it. He got it eventually. That's oh, okay, I, okay. I, does that count as a quick kill? It's like a mid uh, yeah, it it does. Um, it's it's a slow quick kill, I suppose. Um, like you can you can. It's like killing the quick on the kill at the start and then stall for like three rounds and then get it. Like as long as he doesn't stand up and break the ceiling, right it, it counts technically. Almost a frame for frame bow down here. I yeah. I don't think these teams did dip Eastern yet, so it ends up paying off for them. Yeah, I think the uh, the early morph ball and the uh, the way the power bombs ended up being available seemed to work out. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. I just like putting Eastern last. Um, like I'm not terrified of doing it early, but like if I get in this seat, I wouldn't be doing Eastern. Skipping the early missiles. Uh, I guess they do have missiles already. Plus they already have Varia, so they don't have to worry about like Crystal Flash for Hell Runs. Although I feel like we were one of the few teams that paid attention to ammo for Ella and Hell Runs. Oh, this is a... You don't really see frame for frames very often in Rando. This is interesting. Yeah, Two very good players, too. Ivan it's and, it's and 15 minutes in, and there's a lot of different things they could have done, different ways they could have split things between the two teams. Oh, and it, Aussie hits the mushroom. Ivan takes the lead here. I'm going to commentate this like an any percent now. Just... Yeah, so the boots in the back of escape uh they might be intended to be gotten without a glove possibly because the key was in dark cross making uh the back just completely accessible uh in logic when the lamp shows up so interesting to see when that might show up or it might just be the glove leading to it anyways that's a bit more likely uh andy found a mirror at um high jump uh i wish i had already gotten I just didn't notice it then. Yeah, actually, I didn't. Did did Aussie end up doing space, or you just went back down the elevator? Uh, I didn't see, but I think he probably went back down the elevator. Yeah, I suppose you can always. Oh, there's a glove. Okay, so that's boots and Allen logic. Um, yeah, I, I suppose Solsky could just come uh, down Red Tower to do his trade later on, cleaning up all that, including up uh, cleaning up Spacer. I would say in some way of Aussie, like avoiding isolating X ray, uh, but like Aussie can do the, you know, the zero tank method. The granny doesn't necessarily want to because it's very slow, but that's technically never actually isolated for him if he's really worried about it. Uh, was that a book at Edicon Supers? Uh, I was watching Solsky go through this gauntlet. Yeah, zero tank gauntlet is rough. Um, He's got power bombs. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the asset does ninety damage per second. So. Yeah, it's 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 rough. <laughs> yeah, and just actually, 
uh, Solsky coming through there. You, a lot of times you just take a couple ticks from the asset there, but when you have just 60 health, you really don't want to do that. Yeah, you really can't afford it. All right, gets through. Yeah, so I'm not sure if this is common for co-op. Uh, it's not something I tend to do, but uh, just going straight to the back of Gauntlet when you haven't had confirmation from the other players that anything's there. Uh, and there's that oh yeah, we here. we we just did straight. We we actually split up Brainstar a lot of times because uh, Cutie would be the uh, retro early retro. So he, a lot of time he would come and do green Brinstar, and I since I had to do retro anyways, I'd come down clean up uh, blue Brinstar, and then like if there wasn't anything in reserve or at Akuns, then I would just you know come do pink with him or, or whatever. Like we would just split it up, and it ended up working out pretty good. I think we were the only team to do that, and I I actually think it's a really good thing to do in co-op. Yeah, interesting. Um... I think really the meta for co-op is, uh, I, I know I kept saying, um, like you just tend to be more thorough. Uh, there are things that I kind of thought that you'd pretty much always do in co-op that I'm hearing not everyone does. Um, but yeah, the meta for co-op is a lot less established. Um, we don't tend to have very regular races of this mode. Um, it's happening much more often that it's in season for this tournament. Um, I don't, I think this is the best way to play this game. It, it's just such a long randomizer. It, it really cuts down on the like one. The big problem with this is like if you just miss something or you last location something, all of it, it turns like a two and a half hour seed into like a three hour seed, and it's just it just drags. And uh, it doesn't really happen with co op. You have you know you kind of your partner covering you. You have you can split up a lot more. Uh, a lot of times you still end up playing most of the game because there's, you know, at least one thing you need everywhere. 300 bucks, definitely nice early. I've had some pretty late seeds where I, where I realized I didn't have pod money yet when my partner had like $1,200. The resource management can be difficult. Yeah, you're, especially money. You're not getting all of the same junk items. Um, it can get bad with, um, oh, Ivan, I haven't got hit by the big side offer, has 10 HP left. He's got reserves. Probably yeah. okay. I'm not worried about him dying, but this is really going to slow him down. Uh, I mean, you can see, I, uh, you usually don't get to make this comparison, but Ivan and Aussie were neck, you know, frame for frame. Uh, Aussie's now a couple screens ahead. So this is. I'm actually not sure why he's so worried about his house right now. Um, he's got another he's, side offer. He's, he's going to go retro, right? Is he going. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I didn't think so. he was necessarily going to go there. I don't always go retro from here. I don't always go to Blue Grin from here. Well, if he wasn't before, I think that, that Powerbomb pack for 15 he just found probably seals a deal for him. Maybe. Um, the situation like this, if I ended up on low health, I might... Um, I might reconsider, but... Um, Spring Ball's if, Upper Norfair, by the way. Oh, uh, didn't see where that was. Uh, construction zone. Aussie just grabbed it. So okay. I will be getting it shortly here, assuming he doesn't eat it. This is really scary. Okay, so he made sure he had above 80 so that he wouldn't uh, had his reserve trigger in a single hit. And the thing about uh, having your reserve trigger. Oh, nice hover. It's about Rock K from Andy. Uh, it's kind of a risky one, but since he knew the item wasn't essential, it actually didn't matter too much if he failed it. Um, but yeah, when you get hit to zero and your reserve trigger, um, your iframes are still running out during that time. So, uh, you often get double hit immediately after your reserves are done triggering, which, um, if you only have 80 in the reserves, you'll just die in this case. Yeah, it's, it's, he either wants like to have like, oh, there's ether. It was in the ceiling. Um, you either want to have like, a lot, like over a you know a hundred, or you want to have a little so it doesn't <laughs> recharge for that long, and uh, you still have iframes. But yeah, exactly eighty is like the worst because it still takes a while, and then you're just gonna get hit and you, and you die. So. Yep. Uh, so we saw a dark world map check very briefly. Um, I believe we saw turtle rock pendant and swamp pendant. I might have been wrong about swamp, but I definitely saw tr.
Andy in Hera right now. This, I guess this was, he was just banking, because he doesn't have any way of actually accessing uh, the top if it was uh, fire locked, but it wasn't, so he's going to be able to finish it. Which I think is fine, you know, you don't have, you have everything else for, for Hera, so he's kind of pointing you that way. Uh, probably would have been nice to have Hammer, so he could have done, um, you know, East Death Mat one. But, like, co-op, you definitely make uh, a lot more inefficient tech checks. Like, maybe in a solo, Annie wouldn't be beelining this, but it's like, what else are you going to do right now? You know, like, well, I'll do a Crystal Dungeon, you know, might as well. You can also risk um, doing a dungeon where you might have to abandon one of the checks due to not having the item for it, like East Town Big Chest without Hammer and uh, stuff like this hair play. If there's an item in the basement, he can't get. Yeah, because then it, your partner can go clean it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. do it. Yeah, uh, I've definitely had times like that where it's like, well, I'm gonna do Thieves Town, and then like, generally you don't want to have your partner do dungeons that you've already done. But if it's like you're kind of running out of stuff to do, you know, like they they end up sort of prioritizing it a little bit earlier because they gotta do it anyways, right? So it's not the worst. Oh, Andy got knocked down by Moldworm. Yeah, just has going to be doing the actual NMG fight here. I very rarely seen NMG fight. He he does have boots at least. So it, yeah, it is, it is the true NMG fight and not worse than the NMG fight. Yeah, a lot of times you see the the worst version of it where you don't even have boots. So it's really nice for this last hit here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was I I think the first hit that he got knocked down was. Um, really unlucky that the second hit was probably his fault. Yeah, it, it was like he was trying to play it safe, just like I've done that where you just like are on the edge and you just kind of clink him to death uh, until he, he gets the edge, but like, yeah, that was just a standard MG dash through, so. Yeah, the, a, a lot of um, a lot of times on Moldurm, uh, you can dash through and there's generally fairly low risk of um, getting hit by him, but if you hit his head like head on, then you go flying. I think this is the first we're seeing Eastern. Um, not a bad call here. We do have, you know, uh, Mirror and Bow. There's always the, uh, you know, what everyone wants to do is just be able to do Pod and, and Eastern at the same time. But just making, again, in co-op, just making this Eastern call right now definitely makes a lot of sense. You got the Bow. You haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, with Morph Ball being early. Um, and not Moon Pearl not showing up. We really have no idea where that Moon Pearl could be. Um, um, upper Norfair, some, some, something Norfair feels pretty likely to me right now. We've already got the Vare, we got the Morphall, we got the Spring Ball. Like, it feels... The seed kind of feels like it's pointing there. We also have all Rex Ship. Rex Ship's basically in logic from, from the get-go. And just think we have Andy and Ivan both on the ship here. I wonder if one's going to go to Rex Ship. Yeah, it's just that it has potential to be quite yeah, late. Yeah, Ivan is um, on Rex Ship. And he has Spring Ball, so he can do this the easy way. Or he can miss. Yeah. Uh, it's under some debate whether the spring ball method of crossing the mode is actually easy. I think I think it's easy, but um, I think it's easy too because I was like, "How do you like?" I was asking someone how you do this, and I just tried it. I'm like, "Oh, like that." Like, I just I just did so it. I'm, like, I'm really bad at aiming the full bounce properly, where you just hold um, jump the whole time. I do a I do a mock ball spring off it, which is probably harder. But yeah, the I issue just I, like I'm sorry. Like the issue Ivan's having right now is that um he's trying to let go forward to like compensate for overshooting the pedestal. And he gets it there. But yeah, you can't really compensate for overshooting the moat pedestal. Because letting go forward is gonna, um, it's going to like remove the run aspect of your jump. I just go for like a bad CWJ setup, and then you land, and then you get it. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. That's good to know. I don't think I knew that exactly. Um, there, there's there's lots of weird things. Oh, we've got a hammer in uh, Norfair Reserve. So, yeah, and even if you get the right CWJ flame, just go for the CWJ at that point. Like, it's got a built-in backup. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, in Brando, there's lots of uh, different ways to do some kind of uh, more obscure things that don't come up too often, but people kind of develop their own ways of doing
And then we have our first uh, look at Fantoon here. Have we seen all of Brindleaf already from the uh, yeah from the other all, team? I don't, I don't think. Yeah, we have I, any... I think we have. It's funny we only got one person on this grand finals who runs new route. Um. I think to that I say there's a lot of different aspects of uh, both of these games. I know, uh, I was just mostly a randomizer that you can be good at. I was at. just thinking for Fantoon, slowly. But yeah, obviously, I mean, Ivan's a great player. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Andy and uh, Solsky are mostly on the rando side of SM. Andy does have like a 48, I think, which is a really good time. Uh, but yeah. It was mostly just because of the, fan, you know, the, the new route Fantoon Doppler is what you see in rando a lot. Yeah, Ivan also hasn't seriously grinded like super speed speedruns in hey. quite a long time. There's a speed. There's a speed booster. An almost vanilla speed booster at that. Okay. Yeah. Also getting speed booster at wave beam. That was an interesting. I don't know if Ossie did that D boost on purpose with speed and a high jump. Did you see that? Uh, I didn't see it. Did he ball boost like right snapping no, into the platform? No, like you know how like speed high, uh, speed no high jump. You don't have enough to get up single chamber. He like jumped halfway up and then like got hit by like the ball to like deep. Oh, that kind of yeah. I guess he did ball boost. That's kind of that's kind of what I meant. I think. Yeah, sorry. I thought you meant like in a ball for some. I don't know why I thought that. No. Um. Well, e either or. It's kind of it's kind of. I've had both happen. I have tried to go for both. It's kind of the same deal. Um. I don't usually intend to go for it, but um, it's a good backup because sometimes like so for those not aware, uh, if you have speed booster without high jump, uh, it really messes up the graph of um, your run speed versus your jump height. Um, there's a lot of instances where you can get um, a lower jump height than normal from having run speed if you don't have high jump. Yeah, it'd be fucking too much on technical details. It's just awful. It's awful and doesn't do what you expect. Like speed without, speed's nice to have, but having speed without high jump is, I, I've done it where I've had to do an early wreck ship where I had speed, I just turned speed off because I'm used to doing wreck ship like that anyways. I'm just like, you know, it's not gonna help me that much this year. It's gonna make it worse. Especially uh, like having to do a fan tune like that would, it's just terrible. Yeah, it's actually unintended, I'm pretty sure, because uh, Freya Spirit did um, did a disassembly of um, the code surrounding it, and they found out that um, it actually, if you don't have high jump, um, the jump height calculation actually fails to carry the one. That makes I always I always figured it was kind of unintended, because they didn't really expect you to ever do that. <laughs> um. But yeah, it it's, has a lot of weird, quirky properties. Low speed is such a weird category for that reason. Uh, but we do have our first croc visit here. I think there was a power bomb that Aussie found. Again, we don't really care. Once you have 15 in Vari, you stop caring about power bombs. But it is, I mean, those are the cheapest item to pick up in Super Metroid. So, you know, getting to 20, not a bad call. We have Solsky going the other way through uh brinstar here i don't remember oh did he just kind of bail i know he he came here earlier because he got his uh bow and glove i guess he just kind of bailed out of this instead of doing the full loop um if there was nothing in the rest of big pink then yeah, oh he probably. just went down to, he just skipped pink yeah that could be it i don't think there was anything in pink I still feel like it's just faster to run through pink and then come to blue and then go back up the Brinstar elevator? Like, that seems slow. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it could have been a mistake, too, potentially. Not sure, but um, it could have been forgetting that he needed to go to this area and then back the other way. Um, but it might have been a conscious decision. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, I think it was a conscious decision. It's just it's, it seems like a an odd one. Uh, charge at grapple. Uh, that's a really annoying place for charge. Uh, if nothing else good isn't Krakemeyer, because then your uh, your teammate has to make the commitment to also decide to do Croc. Yeah, it's nice to at least they know about it super early because at this point Solsky can just be like, okay, I need to be grabbing a lot of ammo. Um, just like just he know. I mean, he's already at thirty five, twenty five. Kind of looks like that. Yeah, thirty five. Yeah, that's not I'm bad. Sure that's especially right. this, this early. Um, if he I, just, I just if he knows yeah. about this early, he can probably he'll probably be fine. Like this, it's a, that's a good chunk already. Yeah. Um... If they end up uh, getting access to Ridley anytime soon, then they should have enough ammo to deal with that fight without worrying about picking up charge. So basically, um, Solsky can just go through the rest of the game, and then at the end of the game, he can make the decision if he's got enough ammo or if he needs to go get that charge. So it's, it's a safety note. Yeah, I mean, technically right now, it's not in logic, but Ridley is killable. With Spring Ball and doing the uh, high jump plus. Uh, Crockpot actually did that basically to win the last match between Team Farts. Um, they did that to kind of skip the gravity. And it's going back Ooh. to get gravity, anyways. So, Quake at Sky Missiles. Sky Missiles is super annoying without good movement items. Um, and uh, it's actually kind of annoying with um, no extra beams, too. If your beam hitbox is not wide, like a uh, pea shooter. Um, it can be hard to actually shoot the item to reveal it at the point you intend to. I think that's what happened to Ivan. So when he was riding the tripper, uh, the tripper went too far under the overhang and he wasn't able to get around it. This... So he sees Quake is there. Now he has to ride the tripper again to go pick it up because it might be required. This 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 wall jump over the tripper is literally the only thing in this game I'm better at cutie at. <laughs> and I was going to say that before he showed up in chat. The one thing. Nice little diagonal uh, spark here from Aussie to get out. That is one of the hardest short charges that is still he useful. He missed it again. Game. Are you serious? Oh, and apparently that ripper will force you into the wall. That's horrible. Yeah, enemies can do that. Um, when you're so if you're making a wrong hike, you actually have to be really careful with how you place um, even like the platform enemies, like the like the cameras and uh, Kazans, because um, if you're if you're standing on one uh, and it descends into the ground, it will actually pull you into the ground with it. So same kind of true for walls. Um, right. The sloping of that wall, like slopes push you outward, whereas uh, solid tiles don't. So the slopes of the wall actually uh, make it so that you'll always get pushed out. You'll never get stuck in that wall. As I far can't as I believe know. Solsky was the first person of these four to get the true crate quick kill. Uh, no! <laughs> we, still have, uh, we still have a crate fight for Ivan to do at some point. So uh, both teams still have a, have a shot. He's in his own personal hell right now. Uh, yeah, so this like, I guess he's just abandoning it. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you could not need it. Uh, Turtle Rock is a pendant. Like, it's not the worst call, but uh, that. I mean, like these these players are so all these players are so good that like something like if that ends up being required for Meyer or even if Turtle Rock ends up being required, like that could be the game right there. Just that amount of time, I'm just gonna have to go back for that. Yeah, yeah I, you can tell he's flustered because he's not getting uh, he's not getting the damage boosts on the bowling spikes correctly. Yeah, SM like when when you get frustrated by something like your your play can just go out the window real real fast. It, it's it's kind of like walking in real life. There's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of uh, different motions and mechanics that are at play that um, you get used to it and you learn how to do all of them automatically. But then if you have to think about it too hard, then it actually becomes difficult to move. 
I think the frustrating, real frustrating thing is, you know, speed is just available too. Um, and I suppose Farts doesn't know about it yet. Yeah, yeah, they don't know about it yet. Um, it is, it is like really tantalizing that that item is an unknown requirement. Yeah, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. But so medallions, you you generally can't find out if they're required until you have access to seeing the front of the medallion dungeons, which generally requires mitts. Um, yeah. Also, I guess we missed the hammer in Upper Norfair. Um, uh, also has it doing? I I, I, ca I called it. It was at Norfair Reserve. Oh, you did. Okay. Um, I missed it then. But that also gives us e uh, East Death Mountain uh, access. That also puts us just the Moon Pearl away from actual Death Mount or Death Mountain Dark World access. Definitely feels like it's going to be. I mean, we've seen everywhere else. It's got to be East Death Mountain, right? I suppose we have. We had that mushroom. I don't think I've seen that handed in yet. Uh, Ossie might have done it real quick because he has the float. Uh, that'd be real something really easy to miss on a, on a four way restream. I didn't see where the uh, mushroom was at all. Mushroom was uh, missiles behind reserve and Brinstar. The super secret ones. Apparently, it was nothing. Okay, it was nothing. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to see, if not the Pearl, it's going to be something like Gravity Suit or something over here. Uh, you know, uh, one of those, like, things that opens up a lot. Because uh, we're, really, we're really running thin. Uh, if it's something small, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be like leads one thing right to the Pearl. Have we seen any of the speed checks gone back for, like, Waterway and such? I don't think we have. Uh, no. So that's also potentially interesting. Yeah, it's also... Unless th there's something else like more fall bombs in a weird location, it, it's basically impossible to do those speed checks early. Um, because uh, Spring was in retro to get to speed to go back, so... Yeah, so we're going to see Climb Supers from Andy. Oh, actually, Andy is just kind of uh, preemptively checking this. They don't know about speed yet. You can do wall jumps all the way from the bottom to yeah. this one. I, how do you feel? I'm not a fan of this. I uh, um, I, Here, I do I do like doing it. Um, here's, here's my thing. This is right next to the other speed check anyways, right? So now all you've done is just isolated the other speed check even more when because it's not like if it was two different items for two different requirements sure but like waterway is a speed check anyways so just come check this when you have speed anyways like because you, you got to come back down to waterway you know it's kind it's kind of similar to lumberjack when you put it that way um yeah, it's just like oh just do the lumberjack check i'm sure you have boots already um, yeah i think there's like some really there's some really weird situations i think that i i actually can will burn you but i don't like that lumberjack early i'm i'm one that always does with boots. There's actually, I even say, like, there's a couple of times when Lumberjack makes sense. Like, if you have to do Aga anyways, like, it's an Aga seed, you're like, oh, I'll just do this, right? That, where that information is valuable. I don't think this information is ever valuable <laughs> because, again, you just have to do it with speed. Anyways. Um, right. So I like, I like uh, the possibility of seeing that. And then if you find speed at some really remote location, instantly knowing that the play is to come back. Here. I, I guess that's true. It, it does. The fact that I don't check it, I generally have it as a really low priority so that that is true um it, it, it's like the, you know there are things we can disagree on but generally for those things there is a situation where one person will be right and the other person will be wrong one person will get an advantage out of doing it their way yeah actually you're making me reconsider my stance now because that is true i always end up checking speed those speed checks very late Um, I personally highly value information in co-op. Um, like, I, I value information efficiency over um, actual grabbing item efficiency, uh, often over even clearing dungeon efficiency. Um, but a lot of it depends on your team's dynamic, too. Um, yeah. And then later in the game, like, so we haven't gone over, um, for any new people, we haven't gone over... Um, the uh, finishing timing rules. So it will be uh, the last person to finish on your team constitutes your team's finish. Everyone on your team has to be done. So uh, basically in a 2v2, that means uh, the player that gets fourth 
uh, loses it for their team. So that's a no. horrible way of looking at it. Well, I mean, it's 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 the simplest way to look at it. I think it's, it's, I, like, it's, your, your goal is don't get fourth. But I mean, that's that's technically true. I've never thought of that way, but it just that feels like the. I was not the first to put it that way. Uh, I think Solsky just hovered uh, to Paradox, um, to get that gravity. So yeah, I don't I don't know if you called if you pointed out the gravity. Um, that oh, I missed found it earlier. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah. I, I missed it too. I, I saw it on the first time. Well, I was, I was. Oh, was it Death? Was it Death Mountain? Yeah, yeah. It was in Paradox Cave. Okay, well, uh, so I, I no Moon Pearl call yet, that, right? Because I was like, moon it's pearl. either Pearl or Gravity. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 you kind of did. Um, but I was, I was, I was saying earlier um, how Moon Pearl can be really, really buried, um, and this is a seed that is turning into a lot of plays Super Metroid first, and then a link to the past. Uh, As you know, Morph Ball can be buried too. Yeah, sometimes you get the opposite. Um, like whichever one, whichever one of Morph Ball or Moon Pearl at the start, you have to be somewhat prepared for the other one to be absolutely buried. Yeah, that's generally how these go, is that you'll have either an early Morph or an early Pearl. Sometimes even early both. Uh, those tend to be a little rare, but yeah, I feel like a lot of times you end up getting early Morph, and then your Dark World ends up being somewhat early in SM, and then you kind of find the suits to finish it off. Okay, so yeah, on the subject of um, uh, have, needing your whole team to finish, um, that means that throughout the game, um, you'll have to make different balancing decisions as far as uh, who decides to do um, worse checks and who decides to do straight uh, progress based on um, who on your team is further ahead. Um, you want to catch up the player who's behind because it is uh, the time of the player who's behind that determines your team's time. Yeah, and it's optimal because if someone finishes way ahead of the other one, that's basically wasted time. They could have been doing more things to help their partner. So just from like an optimal theory standpoint, it's always if you can f finish the, the exact same second is the optimal is what you're going for. Also, apparently Aussie had a rare uh, mid mid left pattern on Fantoon. Oh, they had to deal with uh, Solsky found hookshot at Crab Seekers and Meridia. Shout out to Azner. Uh, what about me? Remember did the, did the left mid have something to do with me? No, no, no. You, when you scout it, <laughs> every time Crab Super is like, I call you out now because oh. you scout it in your undo run. Oh, yeah. That's not, is that even your PB still, or did you, you PB'd over that since then? Um, I PB'd over that in the Hunter qualifiers last year. Oh, that's right. Um, which I would have gotten sub 120 if I didn't fail a Spring Ball Zip skip. <laughs> oh. That, man, that's rough. Um, the, the the new thing that I do in with Crab Supers is that um, because I'm used to Rando, like there is that one run you're making fun of me where I scouted it even though it was vanilla. Um, yes. There's one run in Multicat where I straight up forgot to pick it up because I'm used to seeing that it's nothing and then not picking it up. Right. Yeah. 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 So don't mix Rando and vanilla. Uh, or actually, no, you can. Just don't play you just have to be responsible. It's like a drinking ad. Just be responsible. Yeah, I so there's an SM any percent tournament going on as part of SG Live. I don't think any of these guys are in it. So uh, no, I don't think so. So you know, being responsible and not mixing your rando and vanilla play. Yeah, I mean, Oski would be the only one that I would expect to maybe join it, and uh, he didn't. So. Um, he beat Zenny in it last year. It was just pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, Aussie's a fantastic player. Uh, Andy took a little bit doing the gate glitch to Krokemeyer. Yeah, uh, um, Aussie actually missed this uh, shine on this atomic. He has to go back to clean him up. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, messing up Rukship Attic is pretty bad because. And it, like to get the check, you have to open both doors here. So you gotta you supposed to start at the left or start at the right, kill all the enemies in your path, uh, open the door on the left, then open the door on the right. And if you miss an enemy, you have to go like pretty much all the way back. Yeah, he actually um, ended up missing the second atomic, so it wasn't that far back to kill him. So as far as uh, it being bad, it wasn't that bad. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, 
speaking of uh, co-op and kind of being opt kind of what's happening with Andy and Ivan right now, where they're sort of chasing each other, is generally what you want to avoid. Uh, they've pretty much done everything but this, so... I mean, they both have to come here anyways, but it always feels kind of bad. Uh, at, well, at least they have uh, Ivan Head scouting everything, so it's not like Andy is going to be wasting time. Yeah, so the less ideal thing about this situation is that... Um... Oh, there's the Bas pearl. Basically, that um, Ivan has to pass by Krokemeyer and leave it um, without having the knowledge yet of whether Andy's going to find anything good there. Yeah, and you can see here, uh, Crockpot is just like a lot of times it's hard to tell who's ahead, but since like the the seeds sort of neck down onto this gravity suit, um, I, I mean, I, I guess Team Farts already had done this wreck ship, which Aussie's finishing up now, but. Uh, it's pretty obvious that Crockpot has a pretty significant lead right here, and then we don't—we still don't even know about Quake. If Quake is a thing, then um, yeah, it's that's gonna be rough for for Team Farts. But yeah. we still have a lot of stuff. I mean, it could still be—we don't have like Fire Rod, um, Samaria, like things that can be you know kind of anywhere. Those like items that lock uh, very little things uh, can definitely be a game changer, especially like seeds like this where you have a very late pearl. You have all of Dark World. And if you're only looking for one or two items, if one team just spikes it early, like that's going to be a big uh, time difference. Did you catch the pearl in Bright Sand Pit? Yeah, I did. I, okay. I, yeah, I interjected it's... there was a pearl when you were talking real quick, but I I, I thought you did, but I wasn't sure. Um, it's kind of annoying to have to save scum this, um, especially yeah, looks... when you've got um, uh, a possible uh, dragon that you can go and do. Um, yeah, I, and that makes the routing even more awkward. A lot of times in this situations, like I'd kill Drake on it and then like, get this on the way out. You know, like oh, I, there's one in right sand pit. I'll I'll double check left sand pit and then leave. Um, so it looks like Sol Solsky is just going to do this and he's going to kill Drake on later. So he's going to be isolating that a little bit. Um, Aussie's also going to have to come get this moonfall right now. So they could just be leveraging the co-op where maybe Aussie will do that. Um, kind of depends on who's ahead on their team. I guess it's... Pr well, Aussie's going to be up two bosses. Yeah, I would think, if anything, Solskjaer would want to do it to get the extra boss done over Aussie. Yeah, that was the other thing. Like, Aussie is generally the faster player than him. Um, that is true, so too. It makes, um, it makes more sense for uh, Solskjaer to get more of the bosses done, which is... Also, one of the reasons that I thought Aussie going straight to create at the start of the seed was odd. Yeah, I mean, as far as like, and create is such a whatever boss, just kind of whoever gets there comfortably. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I'm used to paying a lot of attention to that stuff. Um, maybe they, um, maybe they don't consider it as important. You know, for for how successful Crockpot has been, maybe I should have. Uh, been paying more attention to them throughout um, as to what their strategies are. I think a lot of it is just be Aussie. That helps. Yeah, it's... I don't know. Um, in, in some respects, your um, your your overall skill level um, of your team is really important, but also like your ability to use it effectively in co-op is also very important. Yeah, I actually did a uh, a practice race with both, uh, where I was partnered with both Solsky and Aussie at one point during these, just to kind of, because uh, our team is famously bad at random. Like, let me learn stuff, and uh, it's it was funny how different styles uh, Solsky and Aussie had. Aussie is a very easygoing player, just like, just like, yeah, we can do that. That's fine. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> or Solsky was more like, no, we're doing this. I'm like, all right. So we have our uh, first look at Dark World here. Uh, still sub hour. It actually feels a little longer than that. But yeah, yeah I, I guess the moon pearl like, wasn't terribly buried. No, it wasn't really buried. It was after kind of a, you know, you had to get to the hammer. You, you basically needed spring ball into, it was very linear, right? Spring ball into uh, gravity, or spring ball into hammer, into gravity, into more uh, moon pearl. So 
uh, you, a lot of times in hard, you don't, you know, that's why I think hard is actually better for, for co-op. Uh, I'm not a fan of hard for, for solo generally, but uh, the fact that it's, co-op seeds are always kind of boring when it's linear because you just kind of end up doing the same thing. Uh, so yeah, this this ended up being pretty linear up to this point. Now we have all of Dark World. They can go wherever they want. Although, you know, surprisingly, not a lot of crystals we can actually do right now with, with our equipment. I mean, we can do pod. Uh, add a logic. We don't have a fire source, but that's not really that big of a problem. Uh, and Thieves Town, and that's it, I think. Uh, Ice Palace. Let's bomb this. Oh, we do have the mitts. I didn't miss the mitts. Uh, I did too, actually. I didn't see where those were. Oh, Hype Cave. Yeah, I was about to say, they, they must have been early, early Dark World. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's like probably one of the first things you do when you get Dark World access. Yeah, actually, in this situation, I would have actually been going straight to Thieves Town. My, my thing is, if I can, if I have hammer, uh, Hammer, boots, and sword. Just do thieves down because it's a dungeon, and just, those are the three things you want to make it fast and and fully completable. If I don't, if I don't have one of those three things, then I'll do hype cave first. Mm, hype cave gets you information faster, so that's why I do it first. I'm all about the information. Uh, it's one kind of. One thing I think that actually might have put um, Andy and Ivan uh, further back was I believe that they both got boots before getting the glove, which means that they both did the trip through Dark Cross. Um, I think that they had discussed it and decided that boots were uh, worth taking that trip and then yeah, the, the glove, glove afterwards. Yeah, the glove being so easy. So I, I think that's what happened, and I think that bit them a fair bit. Yeah, it's it's one of the reasons I don't like. It's actually one of the reasons I kind of avoid escape in general because, I, I guess, kind of like what you're saying with information. Uh, if I can do the back, I get a lot of information about escape in general, right? Whether it's it's glove locked, whether it's key locked, whether or lamp locked. You know, I get all that information. Maybe there's only two items up front, and that's a really slow two items at that point. So I don't really want to do it. And like, I, what, it's only one items actually in logic at the beginning of the game, right? That the first cell, uh, depending if it's a key or not, there's only one guaranteed item in logic, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I'm just not a fan of escape very early. I mean, in this situation, we have the sword. Then you know, I'm, I'm more inclined to do it. But that, with where that morph was, you know, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And, and like, we're we're really talking about pretty minor stuff here. But you know, in the grand finals, especially in co-op, it's the little stuff's really going to matter. And I think that's yeah, what Croc Bush has just handled the little stuff a little better overall. Yeah, little stuff really uh, starts to matter more, um, especially if it's like a fairly straightforward seed or if it's um, if it's either if it's either like a jet seed or if it's a full clear seed, the little stuff is all that matters. So we do have okay. So ether is total rock. So we don't still don't know about the Meyer medallion yet. Oh, oh there's, there's that cane. Maria, which is um, I think it's a fair dip into total rock here. Um, yeah, I actually like uh, fire rodless dips into total rock. I'm a fan of those. They can rabbit hole you if you get the correct key layout to avoid the fire lot to right side. They can, but it's rare enough. And it's one of those, I mean, it's rando, right? That's one of those things that it's just like, you can't worry about that. I feel like I, if, I agree. if it's going to happen to you, it's, it's going to happen to you. Like we, we had stuff like, um, like actually my team's match against uh, Plasma Gober had a lamp in the first chest of Turtle Rock and you were supposed to get it without fire rod. I think it was hard locking fire rod. I remember correctly. So you can get stuff like that where you have to go in. Um, I I like um, the potential time forfeiture you get from being wrong about it. Uh, I, I I like that more in co-op. Like in co-op, you can take you can uh, kind of risk doing extra things it's more likely your opponent's gonna do them too it gets you yeah. more information as a whole uh, it helps your partner 
I think maybe the only re it's because Solsky found, and at this point, Aussie's got three SM bosses and Solsky's one, and they both are one easy dungeon down. I guess, I mean, Eastern's a little bit longer than uh, than Hera, but Aussie's going to be, Aussie's going to do Eastern whenever he does pod, right? Like it's Actually, yeah, that's that's fair enough. Solsky is behind on dungeon clears. So. Yeah, which is actually why I'm surprised he did so much. Like, I know I, I kind of what you were saying was like, you know, the hookshot cave and, and super bunny is just quick chats for inf information. I, I, if I was Solsky, I just want to get into Thieves Town and start getting a crystal lead on Aussie here to even it out a little bit, you know? Um, and let Aussie get those. Because, I mean, Aussie's about to finish up here. He could have just been doing those checks right now. And I don't think that information gap really is going to make a difference. So, because, yeah. like, what is Aussie going to do now? Because that's the other thing. It's like, in co op, you have to think like two or three steps ahead where it's like, you know, uh, Solsky did all that stuff, and now he's going to come do, like, Thieves Town. What is Aussie going to do now? Like, they're going to be in the same spot, aren't they? More or less? This is like, I guess Meyer, like, Meyer, is LN. Exhausting. Meyer and LN, I guess, is what uh, Aussie can do. So maybe that's why Solsky doesn't want to do this low of an LN. Because uh, this is kind of low. you got to do Spring Ball. I mean, Solsky can obviously do it, but it's just like, if you have Aussie in your team, let him do it. <laughs> I had the same thing of cutie where it was just like, I can do it, but you're cutie. You go do your thing, right? Like, because yeah, he's going to get the glove. I, I think, I, I mean, I guess it's debatable if you want to go into Meyer right now. You do have that cane. It's going to be a pretty low percent Meyer too, uh, which is fighter sword. You do have the bow. Uh, and I guess uh, Aussie just found silvers too. I missed where those were. Those must be behind dragon or something. Uh, Probably. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if Aussie just comes up to Death Mountain, gets that cane, does Meyer and LN. That seems the most natural for him. And then Solsky will probably do, I would bet, Thieves Town, and then probably swing around to either, either Pod or Ice Palace. You do have that red cane, right? This is something you want for Ice Palace. Um, it is out of logic, but with red cane, I, I feel like Ice Palace becomes a lot more attractive to break. Uh, I, I know the rule used to be for Icebreaker that you would never break Ice Palace, um, especially if Swamp was also a crystal. Uh, because it could just be your last item, right? And it was pointless. Solsky did in Skull Woods before Thieves Town. Yeah, I hate this. I hate Skull Woods. <laughs> yeah, because you were talking about going to checks. Thieves Town straight away after this. Um, this is like one of another one of those um, safety checks. Um, or like, like a lot of times I'll do this in in solo as well, just because. Um, if you just got Dark World access, um, there's still a decent chance there's something there, and even going in without Fire Rod. Um, and it's just harder to route back in um, right. at a later time if Fire Rod doesn't show up and you that's, don't do it right true. away. I think that's one of the things I never, I don't consider one of like, my biggest weaknesses is like, oh, I don't want to do this because it's bad, and I don't think of like, well, if this never happens, then when when am I ever going to do it? And I think like I don't think that I just try to think of like when's what's the most efficient way to do this like in optimal circumstances, but that obviously doesn't happen a lot in Rando. Yeah, I think you're approaching it too much like a speedrunner. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, also, getting his mitts here. It'd be interesting where the I I feel like you just go get this K now, right? There's no reason not to, and then do Meyer LN. Um, and what else do you do? Pod. Yeah, I mean, he could do he could do Pod Eastern. I just feel like you have the red. I, mean, I think the. I mean, I feel like going to LN makes. I mean, I'm a big fan of doing LN ASAP. It's linear. It doesn't really. I mean, I guess it does get faster. With, I mean, with items, but you know, it's linear. You got to do it anyways, especially with, with Aussie being. I, I feel like a little ahead here overall. Um. Just go ahead and do that, especially with being able to do Meyer too. You can do Meyer. You can. Uh, oh, you can go get that Bombos too. Bombos was a desert ledge, right? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so we can get that Bombos really easily, like... I, I think, uh... I think our... Um, so Ivan got it All right, by uh, going through desert with the book. Yeah, I, I think so. Which I think is another thing that actually put them behind. So, I mean, desert's green pendant. Um, he didn't beat it. Um, no fire source. But it was somewhat of a time sink for them, I think. I, th I think Solsky... I didn't see for sure if Solsky got Bombos the fast way via Flute and Mitz and Mirror. But... I, I don't think he did, because he had he's had that. Okay, yeah, so never mind. It's He must have done Desert with the book, too. So they, they both did it. Yeah, I mean, also, Ivan just taking so much time on that, that Quake. Uh, I mean, put him a little bit behind, and then, of course, he's losing on opportunity cost that Andy kind of has to cover for him a little bit more, and they kind of ended up colliding in that uh, upper Norfair region. Just... Uh, I think that just spiraled a little bit. Can okay, I see a lamp in Thief's Tone? Uh, I missed. I was looking at Aussie because I'm just curious where he's going to go. I, I feel like he's this has got to be Mountain and then back to Meyer. We'll see if he goes straight to Meyer. He's just going straight to Meyer, so... Okay. I mean, He's it, going it's... here without the cane, so I assume he's not going in. Quake. That's oh, unfortunate. Fun. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. I feel like that's... We're going to need something buried in a... Uh, like, on, in co-op, the worst thing that it can really be is, like... I mean, well, did we see... I don't think we saw Plasma from either Soul or Aussie, right? I don't think so. Um, but I guess we haven't seen... I mean, Andy and I haven't done that already, too. So I was thinking maybe, like, Plasma. Like, the worst thing in, like, a hard co-op is, like, Suitless Meridia stuff, but, like, we've already have Gravity Suit, and we've already done Meridia, so, like... I guess Plasma's still a good place for Annie and Ivan to be something, and just they do it faster. They they pull the trigger earlier, or maybe the speed checks. We haven't we haven't dug up the speed checks. Those can bite you people. Uh, X ray is you know any of those like weird hanging ones in SM are generally gonna be like the worst things. <laughs> we know one of the speed checks. We know one of the speed. You're right. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. So for people who were not around for it, uh, Ivan is the one who went to wreck ship and he saw quake at sky missiles uh no movement items sky missiles is, is a terrible item to get without movement items because you have to ride the troopers and such um he had uh he had uh two or three really unfortunate uh spills when attempting to get the item saw that it was quake uh the thing about quake is early game you don't know if you need it or not so he made the decision to bail on it and not continue to hemorrhage time. I actually kind of liked that play because uh, you might not need it. Um, if you do end up needing it, you get the information that that's the case, and then you can plan from there. So like you kind of, you kind of, I feel like you try to adjust like um, how each player's uh, crystal progression goes relative to the other, so that uh, once you find out you need the quake, you both still have time to go get it, and it doesn't hurt you too much. Because, yeah, like, if, now that they know it's needed, Andy has to go get it anyways. So it doesn't hurt as much as if it was, like, solo. Yeah, I I, I think if it was Bombos, it would have been a bad call, just because Bombos has the dual purposes. Um, but, yeah, for Quake and for him being a little frustrated, I think it was fine. But, yeah, it's really going to hurt. Um, the thing that's going to hurt more is that uh, Andy's doing Thieves Town, Ivan's doing Pod, they're both avoiding Hype Cave. Uh, they're both going to be later, much later to miss than they could be, and thus much later to finding out the information they need Quake than they could be. Yeah, um, the flip side is Mitz can be a wild goose chase a lot uh, in this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times where just nothing's behind Mitz, so they may end up... Sure, they won't have that information, but, you know, they're just sort of priced into that, that extra movement, no matter what. I don't really think that information early is really going to help. Um, so yeah, uh, may maybe missing yeah. the mitts may help a little bit. I mean, they're probably they're gonna get it like right after pod. I think I, I do agree with them rushing the dungeons right here. I, I I'm very big. Always be clearing dungeons is your number one thing if you can do it, even over high value checks like Hype Cave, just because you have to do this no matter what, right? Um. So I, I yeah, I mean the, the quake overall. I don't think they're in a good spot, but I I think their calls here are still okay. 
Yeah, I think the best outcome is for them to get um is for them to hit go mode um before seeing Meyer Medallion. Or before getting emits, I suppose. It's like Yeah. Uh, really the thing we're looking for is Fire Rod. Uh we don't care about flippers because Swamp's dependent. Um so flippers are just lots oh, of Christ Palace. So what do you think about if I was Asu, I'd have gotten that that uh, cane before coming down here. I, I think this makes more sense in your view of the world, where Asu would spend a lot of time doing stuff that's already been seen, and this is earlier yeah, exactly. information faster. I absolutely but, like if my if if my partner gets cane on the mountain, I just absolutely ignore that cane for as long as I can, and I get other information. But I mean, you're delaying them information in Meyer, though, right? I mean, if Meyer is something like yeah, but Meyer is like specific. Um, I mean, like, some seeds just don't work out for us. Um, we've seen that, but, um, I cover- there's a lot of ground available in the world that has nothing to do with the cane that I will do. So, I- for me, I figured that is a fair trade-off. Yeah, I think specifically in this situation where Turtle Rock is the- like, well, especially because it's- it forces the double trip up Death Mountain no matter what, right? It's not like you can, like, okay, I'll just do that on the way the GT do Turtle Rock. Like you have to go up, have to come back down to Meyer, regardless of whether Turtle Rock was a is required, right? So I just feel like you just do that, and then you have you know a lot of efficiency in just doing Meyer with with G uh, Lower Norfair right now. I, if anything, I'd want to be avoiding Lower Norfair right now because Ozzy's movement is so bad. Um, you know, he basically just has the Spring Ball. <laughs> wow, calling Ozzy's movement bad. You know, I'm not his movement items. <laughs> He's doing his best. <laughs> Which is pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's got uh, good enough uh, firepower for Ridley, at least. Yeah, the firepower's not it's, it's mostly just, you know... I mean, he, he did a really good job with, with what he had, so... I But I also think that um, him coming here is that... Um, if nothing important is here, he gets the information from here. It saves Solsky from having to do the Lauren O'Fair in this loadout. Load yeah, out. I mean, he can... Solsky can, you know, especially if they find a high jump or something, or space, or... I mean, it's one of the, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you find space, you know, screw attack and uh, high jump, they're just going to be way faster in Lower Northrop than if you didn't have those things, right? Yeah, I just think... I just think um, that it's valuable in taking... Um, taking an area that has bad movement, and it better informs your partner of whether they have to do the same thing or not. Yeah, especially sending, like, Aussie here, you know, because he's, uh, you know, going to do this pretty well. He's going to do, like, with these, like, off-standard movement equipment. He's going to do this as well as anyone. So just send him here. I think that makes a lot more sense for them, especially than splitting up, like, a link to the past dungeons. Because then again, you kind of run into, like, well, then, once we finish the dungeons, what are we going to do? Both go to LN? Like, you know. I, yeah, both people going to Lauren Orfer is really not the worst I, thing. Yeah, so I don't think it's that it's, bad. It's much more linear than other locations, so following somebody there is not as bad. As we, we we did it once where we were basically right on top of each other and we kept splitting checks. Like I ended up checking Fire Flea and then Cutie checked Jail and then I ended up checking Hoda Ruby because like we kept bouncing back and forth. And it's like none of us actually wasted time because the other person just always got to the first check fast enough that it might as well have just been one person went there earlier, right? Because again, it's just so linear. You have to you know cover mostly the same paths. I also maintain that two people doing Thieves Town at the same time isn't always bad. Yeah, I think for the same reasons. As long as, as long as, I mean, it's just any dungeon. As long as one person's checking stuff ahead of the other person, where not, they don't have wasted movement, I don't think it matters. And especially if it feels like, oh, it feels like it's super likely the next item is going to be here, rather than having your partner doing like gross one off checks, just have both go to the more lucrative place, like it was a solo, right? Yeah, so there was one, um, Ivan's just killing Helmus right here, but, uh, is that our first pot player? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think we found anything here, but, um, there was one previous race that Team Farts did. I cannot remember who they were playing against. Um, but oh. they both converged on a hammerless pod. Um, because they both decided it was the most lucrative play and that hammer was probably there. Um, whereas the team that they were facing 
um, decided to only send one person to it, and then ended up uh, significantly behind them when Hammer turned out to be here. Yeah, I feel, I mean, Hammerless Pod's more of an iffy call there. I mean, you're, you're certainly making a gamble there. I think it was just more than if everything else was kind of bad, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I certainly understand it. But yeah, if it's Hammerless Pod and you both do it, I, I guess the one upside to Pod is like, even like in a solo, right? Um, if you have like a, a big key in the back, um, like that's time you're going to have saved later. And like the only thing you're really wasting is that walk to Pod, which is, it's kind of a long walk to get the Pod, to be fair, but. You know, you're not actually... It's not like Turtle Rock where you have to go through the whole thing again anyways, right? Solsky found another sword somewhere, and I didn't see where. But that basically saves them from, uh, like, sword or, like, lumberjack I mode, was, basically. Uh, I want to say it was Purple Chest. Okay, Purple Chest. Which is actually really bad for Team Forest now, I think. That is... <laughs> uh, well, it's yeah. not... It's not too, uh, uh, Smith Stevens is one of those things that, like, I'll have my partner come back and do a Thieves Town I've already cleared because they got to go do, you know, they can go do that anyways, right? And that while they're in that area, it does delay information. So it's something I try to avoid, but like, you know, it's like, well, I'll just do all the stuff anyways, right? Oh, here's the shovel. I saw a shovel check earlier uh, by Ossie. I didn't know where the shovel came from. Shovel was nothing. Uh, Andy, it would be interesting to see if Andy was the one who checked. Uh, Super criteria, super right? Because yeah, I'm pretty sure Solsky and Anasi don't like that play, so it must have been Team Farns that did it. So yeah. let me just see if we see this uh, waterway check. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they feel like they're behind. Uh, nope. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I also feel like with just with Solsky and Anasi's track record in this tournament, um, you're gonna by default feel behind. Um, so every as soon as you make a mistake setback, like they've made, yeah, I feel yeah, like and every right. setback you experience is gonna just make that feeling much worse. Um, I think it's kind of unfortunate that um, like this, uh, this probably. I mean, there are other factors like Solsky finding that sword. Um, the sword's gonna be a big advantage for them too. Um, but I've been missing that quake. Um, if that ends up costing too much time, um, it costing them this race is, like, um, this is their last chance, basically. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, like you said, uh, Crockpot really doesn't have any L's in their, in their column, and, uh, Team Farce is gonna have to do it back to back here. I, I said it, I said it when they were, this was the, uh, the winner's brackets final. I, I was saying, like, whoever, whoever wins this... Andy needs to teach I Oh, Andy needs to teach himself the uh, how to avoid the popo. <laughs> uh, thank God he's got extra money. <laughs> top top tier Kiki Dash though. Gotta appreciate those little things. I do appreciate the little things. Um, they get lost in... Uh, it's randomizer commentary specifically, I think. They get lost in a lot, because, like, um, there's, always a, there's always a lot of things to talk about with uh, the plays and what directions people are going and what advantages mean what. I, uh, in just a regular Link to the Past randomizer, I mentioned Zero Rush did a manual stale like cancel, and he <laughs> DM'd me afterwards to thank me. I'm like, I got you, don't worry. I I, I really like manual stare like cancels. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, saving that one frame. It's gonna they change. actually, like, um, when they were, like, discovered, it actually made me finally understand um, what happens when you leave a stare and you didn't preserve your super speed. Yeah, yeah. It's basically the same mechanic at play. Yeah, there's been a lot of, like the uh, the fact that uh, fake flippers is actually the same thing as an insula. Like that's actually why it worked. It was an insula deletion <laughs> until we found out insula deletion last year. Like it, it was just it didn't. Um, you had you had just enough time to get off the screen before um, the splash spawns. I think. Um, and it's not it's not that it was like same frame stuff. It just happened to be the earliest time you could exit the screen was one frame before the splash spawned. 
It just happened to be one frame. Yeah, right. Okay, so this is our first uh, look at Ice Palace. Uh, I always feel like Fire Rod is hiding in these uh, Bombos Ice Palace, you know, seeds. A little bit of a meme, but yeah. It's a uh, pretty free full clear of Icebreaker. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like you were saying before, I, I feel like even if Swamp was a crystal here, I still like the breaking flippers now with Icebreaker. Uh, without Kane, I don't really consider it. Um, but yeah, with, with Kane. I, I feel like also in SMZ3 uh, versus just regular uh, Unlinked to Fast Randomizer, I don't really worry about... I, I know regular Unlinked to Fast Randomizer is like, oh, I want to do this dungeon go mode because it's so much faster. There's just so much in this game. I, I just feel like doing dungeons, even doing Swamp as soon as possible, just makes... I, I don't really worry about go mudding dungeons like at all. With SMZ3, you're much more playing the long game. There's more things yeah, you have to find. Yeah, there, there's so much more that, that's happening. If you if you get like like a link to the past randomizer is like um you got like you lost thirty seconds because um you did uh, you went to village and you had to go the long way because you didn't have mitts and your opponent did and you lose the race because of it. Yeah. I mean I think the, the big things in SMZ three is actually skipping SM stuff, just like not doing Meridia or not doing Wreck Ship. I think those are the big prizes more than like, oh I go moded Ice Palace. Like especially with Icebreaker, like that's oh, there's High Jump. So that's really good for so that's gonna save him a bunch of time in lower Norfair. Uh pretty much the only SM he's gotta do. There nothing wasn't I guess we haven't there's nothing really left in SM besides a couple of the one off. We have X ray, we have Shaq, we have Plasma, and we have uh, somebody Warlight. did X ray. Probably oh, I'll see. Oh someone did it? I, I definitely saw somebody in that area. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was Aussie, but somebody definitely did it. I mean, Solsky is the only one with. Oh, uh, Ivan and Solsky have more spell bombs. I missed completely where those were, but that's I think the only thing that puts it in logic, besides that high jump right now. Oh no, spring ball put it in logic. I'm sorry. Uh, Ivan having to do the spring ball jump in a worse stream. Or actually, yeah. no, he's going to IBJ this. The yeah, spring oh, yeah, ball is definitely going to be faster here, but I guess he's not a fan of it. It's a little tricky, but if you get it first try, it's definitely going to be a little faster than this, especially single bomb jumps. I can't double bomb jump to save my life. I, I get like three or four and then it drops. I feel like he's being really greedy with the singles, but made it work it's one way to speed it up is to be greedy with them so yeah it, it scares me sometimes when people space the bombs that far apart though i trust ivan on, on those though i i yeah i guess so i just generally like when i see oh. people oh they're space jumps. so Did someone we... someone mentioned aussie might have skipped mickey mouse and i, I thought maybe because that, that seemed like quite an I mean I guess Aussie's uh equipment was really bad for him. Oh yeah. This is probably intentional, yeah, because Did um... we see um GT missile? I don't think we did. Uh we somebody did somebody checked GT. Okay. It was an E tank and something. Nothing. Good. Okay. So that's that's the only thing space jump's actually gonna matter for. So it's that's a little nice movement front that's gonna speed up his LN a little bit here. Uh but not really a big deal. It's not a game changer whatsoever. Um, yeah, th this would have been, I probably would have skipped GT, because especially I have such easy access to it with the flute, and I don't want to have to, because it's going to be an ammo fight, I just want to save my ammo, I don't want to have to get it back, uh, or, you know, for GT and Ridley. Yeah, I guess because Aussie was in that state where all he had was Spring Ball, and that's kind of a nightmare to get because you got like Spring Ball jump back out of Mickey Mouse. Like it's like almost impossible to do. Yeah, it's so. it's even worse if you do the Hyper Wall jump and you literally don't have anything. Yeah, I, I, is that even possible? I don't think that's possible. Yeah. Oh, well, those are impo flippers. impossible is worse than. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because you, you, you have to go around. Yeah, and then you have you have to do, you have to do hyper wall jump again, the frame perfect, pixel perfect wall jump to get it. Up. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah, that sounds. Uh, so flippers and pyramid fairy. Yeah, uh, that's kind of. 
I suppose that's why I didn't realize Thieves Town and Pod were red crystals. Uh, definitely makes sense on Team Farts why they wanted to push that. Um, actually, surprising that uh, well, Crock Pot's sent... not pushing that a little harder. I I find it because like they oh, I guess sent, Salty is. They sent opposite players to opposite red crystal dungeons. I guess that does make sense, but I just feel like you're not getting a whole lot of forward momentum that way. Yeah, I, I guess. Thieves Town and Pod or in co-op is a really bad uh, red crystals, especially when you have hammer early, hammer bow early, because it's like Thieves Town and Pod are like two dungeons that make sense to split up, but when they're both red crystals, you want one person to do both, right? So it's a little awkward. Yeah, red crystals can be really rough um, in co-op. Uh, our our race against Team Forest, like if you just ignored the fact that I went to Les Meridian, got stuck there I tried for 40 to. minutes. Um, uh, it was still rough because uh, Gravity was behind Pyramid Fairy, and Turtle Rock was one of the red crystals in our race. Um, and that's a really long dungeon that it's like... Um, yeah. Like, it, if both people are doing Turtle Rock, that's a lot of time that one person isn't doing... isn't spending finding new things. Pod is a pretty, like, Pod isn't terrible, but it's a pretty lengthy clear, as opposed to knowing where the big key is already. Yeah, so now Aussie's finally doing the thing that I wanted to do earlier, but, I mean, this does, I mean, like you were saying, he does kind of front mode his information a little bit more. Oh, he's going to go for Bow Meyer too? Oh. Well, I appreciate the, the effort, Aussie. Somewhere out there, FSG is, well, he's probably angry because he didn't actually get it, but... He's probably not, FSG is probably not paying attention because it's randomizer. He's probably not paying attention because he's, well, right now he's sleeping, but either that explained Diablo. <laughs> so, uh, Solsky like going a good AD player. into Swamp. Solsky's making the Swamp play. Uh, he's the one that has have left? I think this actually makes sense. I mean, what else do they have? I think this is the right call. Like, I think this is a good call. Like, what do you have left to do right now? In front of Turtle Rock. <laughs> I think honestly, for, you know what? No, you exactly, know what? Fire Rod. That's no, you it. know what he should be doing. What we said before, he should be coming to Meyer right now too. It's a dun it's a crystal dungeon. You might as well. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, like, I know it's kind of against where you're. you're it, it's very low information, right? But I think in this situation where it's like you have to do a crystal, all you've got left is gross stuff. After that. Just come to your crystal. You know, Aussie's going to be an, a far enough ahead of you that you're not going to have to, like, step on each other's feet. Oh, right. Aussie did front of TR. It's locked right away. That must have been when he got the cane and then... Yeah, yeah, I, I can really that makes, getting the cane. That makes a lot of sense. It's so hard to keep track of everyone's movements on four. It makes four complete players. logical sense that he would have done that because Solsky didn't do it. Solsky left it for him. Yeah, yeah, it makes, makes a ton of sense. But yeah, I, I think Solsky should just be here in Meyer with him right now. Uh, even though it's, uh, even if you know, like, are like ninety nine percent sure it's in Swamp, which it feels likely. I feel like just do on the off chances in Meyer, and then you're just not wasting your time because, like I said, you have to be doing this. I guess Solsky doesn't have silvers. Like he doesn't. Ha He's got a master sword though, so like that's fine. Yeah, Sanders is pointing out that um, Solsky needs quick to go to Meyer. So you can't do it right now. Sure, but uh, okay, that's even more reason to do that it. That would so actually, knows, yeah, you're right. He should be doing. Yeah. He should be doing Fantoon. Like, it made perfect sense to not do uh, Wreck Ship until you knew Quake was uh, needed. Now he knows it's needed. You know, just do it now. Like, he's and he's got high jump and speed. Like it's not going to get faster for him at any point. The red crystals. So like we said, they're kind of bad for this. But like once you know what's behind Pyramid Fairy. Um, they're not bad for the other player to get at some point. No. Um, it's just bad because you're kind of getting the item that's behind there desperately. But with it being flippers, it's actually quite awkward because um, you don't know if you need flippers in this particular seat or not. Um, yeah. I suppose... so yeah, I, but like Pyramid Fairy is not a huge commitment since you have to do the dungeons that's behind anyways. Yeah, I suppose we were saying, like, Aussie has been ahead. I mean, Solsky's now up 
three dungeons on him. Uh, granted, Asi does have <laughs> three bosses on him, but I feel like... Uh, I guess the dungeons versus the bosses are going to be similar. Um, I mean, Dragon at this point you just do after Ganon, right? And then uh, your Ridley c combos in perfectly with Meyer, right? You might as well just do... Yeah, I, I just feel like for Solsky that what makes the most sense is... They might just, like, honestly have nothing left aside from Meyer and Swamp. Yeah, but I still Maybe feel that's like... the call. Let Solsky catch... I mean, because the thing is he's got to do... Not only has he got to do Fantoon, he's got to take this other step to Quake. So I, I definitely think Aussie's still ahead here. Let just Aussie do the Swamp play after he does Meyer, right? Yeah, so the thing is, if Fire Rod is in Swamp, then it doesn't matter because they oh, both have no. to do it anyways. Oh, um, no. Grapple there is very bad if it leads to nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Is that See, the, check tool? If if Fire Rod is here or it's it's on uh on check tool, I feel like Solsky's gonna get bailed out. If it's not there and Solsky goes on with this wild goose chase for nothing, like again, I just feel like that's why Like the problem and this, this happened for us a lot is like one of us would get like behind a chain and like we didn't even think it was that bad and then like all of a sudden you're in go mode, right? And you're like, Oh, now I'm behind this huge chain that I have to go hunt down, right? and you end up finishing 10 minutes apart from each other. Oh, uh, we had so many, uh, not, I don't know about so many. We had several seeds that were like that, that I, I followed a really dumb chain. And then at the end of it, suddenly I, you know, found go mode at the end of a very bad chain. I already had the chain completed. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the same thing. I had a decent amount of dungeons too, so it was like it's finishing twenty minutes ahead. There was nothing we could do at that point. Yeah, um, it, it's always like uh, like it always feels like oh, you just keep progressing, keep progressing, keep progressing. But then it's like it turns out the person that the one person ends up playing the chain solo, and then the other person's uh, you know again it's the person who finishes fourth, like you said. So like there's there's definitely times where just catching up is more important than information. Yeah. So and, essentially, like. Uh, your crystal dungeons and your bosses are things that you know are progression, but then right. all the rest of the stuff is like, especially this swamp that Solsky's doing is things that you, uh, things that might be progression, but you don't know yet. And if it you find out if it's progression, you find an item at the end of it, and then as soon as you find it, it gets tacked onto the list of the things your partner has to do. Yeah, I mean, I think there's like there's like all the dungeons and the bosses which you have to do, right? And the dungeons are obviously different per seed. Like those, that that's the top of the list, and like right below that, there's like the stuff that's done 99% of seeds, like Hype Cave, right? It's like just do Hype Cave. Like, what are you putting it off for? Like, you're gonna <laughs> do it at some point, right? Um, and I feel like once you start getting past that list and the stuff where it's like like this, the you know pe uh, Pendant Swamp, once you start getting in, like you start thinking about doing the gross stuff, I feel at that point is where it's like just catch up if you're behind a chain, right? Which Solsky is here. It's a, it's a minor chain, right? But he's got to do, you know, he can get a boss done. He can get his required medallion. Uh, meanwhile, Aussie's doing Pendant uh, Desert, which is green Pendant, right? So I don't know if this is a two. I feel like this has to be a two item land mill for Aussie to be doing this. I could be wrong. They might just not have anything else. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, yeah, like Solsky. Yeah, again, if Solsky ends up chasing down this this grapple and it's nothing, he's in a bad spot. Um, what is... I feel like it's kind of opening the door a little bit for farts here. Because uh, overall, I feel like they're kind of even. Um, they're kind of even with the exception that if it is this grapple or swamp, I think Crockpot is definitely ahead again. But, oh, well, Andy's going into swamp, so this is kind of... I mean, I guess... Yeah, what else do they have? The speed yeah. location. You know, waterway. Um, this swamp not paying out was Team Farts' best bet. Um, I kind of think that they're... So, like, Andy did a fire sword cold stare and did it pretty well. Um, which the other team didn't have to do because they had the Master Sword. Um, but I think Andy and I are probably going to miss this, uh, purple chest sword. Because I think they're... I think their thought process right now is that they made too many mistakes so far, like, with the Quake and such. Yeah, and I think they're deciding to cut Smith's chain because of it. Now, the interesting thing we might see, so if uh, this grapple ends up being required for Shaktul, 
Um, Ozzy's probably just gonna skip it. In fact, he's definitely gonna skip it, right? Like, he's just gonna go do the Crystal Flash. Oh, yeah, I, I suppose so. Uh, he doesn't have Morph Ball Bombs, though. That's actually big for that. Um, I'm, I'm sure he can do it without. It's a way easier with Morph Ball Bombs. I saw how Green Pennant turned into, like, the last chance for Fire Rod to not be there, I think, and it's nothing. It could still be Plasma. I mean, um... Did nobody check? Oh, yeah, I guess that hasn't no been one checked. checked. Plasma, yeah. Plasma, I feel like there's... Uh, like you said, Co-op definitely has the clear everything mentality. I feel like Shack Tool and Plasma are still the things that people like skipping. Yeah, they still suck in Co-op. Yeah, they're, they're still bad. Um, for us, it was de de entirely dependent on how deep in the seed we were, or like, you know, if it was getting thin anyways and just do it. But... Yeah, or if like it, one it player depends. was ahead. Like, it, we, we would spend our ahead capital a lot on Plasma and Shack. One of the things that I like about playing randomizer in general is that um, you have these like general rules of the meta um, in all these situations. Like, yeah, you want to do Thieves Town first generally because it's fast. You want to do, you want to route into this because everyone else is going to do it. And it's fast, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for some of the worst checks, there are like, they're kind of like these, um, these kind of all these like buttons and dials as to like whether they're worth it or not. And it's all the other influencing factors, like how far you're in the seed, how many items you still have uh, left, how many mistakes you made so far um, that just slightly tweak um, the percentages of whether you should do them or not. Yeah, and that's why I like co-op for this, because it adds another layer. And it's like not only that, you got to keep track of what your partners are doing, too, right? That <laughs> is impossible. It's, yeah, no, it, it's, this mode it's, is really difficult to play. Um, I'm kind of happy to have a break from it after this tourney is going to be over. Yeah. I mean, that was basically our death now was one of us found high jump, the other found spring ball, and it ended up being that was for <laughs> front door suitless Meridia for Moon Pearl, and we forgot. <laughs> so we did Aga. So just, yeah, keeping all that stuff in track of your head uh, can, can be really difficult. Because, like, my brain doesn't turn on suitless Meridia until I see Ice Beam. And I just like completely forgot. So yeah, last like I said, the, the end of the winners bracket was kind of a it was a really dumb suitless gravity location. It was like suitless, bootless gravity in a uh, watering hole. I think it was something really dumb. Um, and a crockpot ended up doing high jumpless uh, lava dive to kind of get around it, but uh. Yeah, we kind of have a looks like to be another like last location here, which I think is kind of good for grand finals. You know, it just makes it pretty, you know, execution just routing dependent at that point. Uh, some, someone just can't spike something. I mean, I suppose someone could spike something here, but, you know, neither of them did. So let's see if it's going to be. I think these are the last two checks we got on <laughs> like crockpots doing them simultaneously. Yeah. Oh, have we not seen Waterway yet? No, it's not. this is in the first waterway check. That's crazy, actually, considering what else we we have to deal with. I kind of, I just kind of like we've had speed for a while. I thought somebody might have done it by now. Yeah, it is. It, it's a really awkward check. It, it that's why it's the main reason I actually like delaying Brinstar as late as possible, uh, because it just becomes such gross checks. That even if there's nothing there, like obviously if something's there, then it's a really big payoff. But even if there's nothing there. Like, I, I save the time that my opponent might have to spend later on. Half magic. Okay, so what don't we have? Shack tool? Oh, Shack tool. Shack tool. Right. Yeah, that was the big deal of oh, and, uh, and Swamp. Alucard pointing out in chat that uh, more fall bombs are actually in Aqueduct, so I wouldn't be surprised if Aussie just gets those on the way to the Crystal Flash to make it way easier on himself. Oh, yeah. I didn't actually know where they were. So that makes it... That makes it fine. That's yeah, crazy, I, though. I like, like you... That you basically never end up. I feel like Crystal Flash clips are like they're never the play in co-op. Like almost never. This is uh, an incredibly contrived case. I think. I think the the one place I think they're actually very useful is getting to Dark World S ASAP. Especially if the seed starts necking down and becoming linear. If you can get one of your players into Dark World, right through Meridia, um, I think that's very very useful. Yeah, I guess you can avoid. Um, doing the same stuff as your partner pointlessly. Yeah. In that case. I mean, I think just getting to Dark World in general ASAP is, is a good thing a lot. 
I still I still think it's really rare that this is like it's pretty it's pretty idea. rare, but you know, any, anytime you have an early early gravity, um, there's also the thing where it's like, oh, I have gravity and I want to do Meridia, but I don't want to double dip it. Like it can completely cut out on double dip. I mean, Crystal Flashing Shack, so yes, that is incredibly rare and contrived. Uh, oh, we do have uh, hair abasement. I completely forgot about that. Do oh yeah, because lamp was late. That's what happens with uh, seeds where. You're starved without a fire source for forever, and then you get one super light, and it's the lamp. Oh, that was one of the reasons. I didn't even realize, but we might be missing a mine item in Mire, too. We have no fire source. It was completable. I th I thought, did Aussie not have lamp when he Oh, no, this? he did have lamp. Never mind. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm I remember sorry. him doing oh, lamp. There's the fire. So this is what I was saying. I was like, Solsky just spent all this time. <sighs> Andy's Being gonna honest. spend all that time too, because I don't think Ivan. I don't think Ivan is following that. Is following this to Hera Basement in time for Andy to get yeah, out. Yeah, a little surprise. I feel like Hera Basement is one of those hail mary plays you can make if you feel like you are behind. So I'm a little surprised. I feel like Swamp at this point when the seed neck down. I think Swamp's a little too obvious. Um. Yeah, I feel like if they did feel like they were a little behind, they needed to make a play. I feel like that Hera call might have been it. But then you can kind of get trapped in the like, oh, we got to make a play, we got to make a play, and then just you end up just digging yourself a bigger hole, type of thing, you know? Yeah, um, and swamp I think is like sort of the big play in this, but like I don't know, it's 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 a big time sink. Like actually, swamp being required, I think, would have been worse for team parts in that situation because it would have left them fewer outs if it was required. Yeah. Like they're they're out here is actually that they don't do it at all. Is that our was that our go mode by the way? Are we, yeah, it was. Yeah, so go go mode out. at one thirty nine, uh, for crockpot. Yeah, but yeah, that whole swamp. That that's what I was saying. Solsky just ends up being now he's a mile behind, right? Yeah, um, I would not be feeling great if I were him, but I think. Like Andy's pretty much gonna be doing the same thing, so. So Crockpot is still going to have a lead. Yeah, I I don't really see a way of Arts winning this at this point. And it's kind of interesting because this is uh, it's pretty much the exact same way that the tourney played out um, back in 2018. Um, the first co-op tourney that we had. We had Team Farts as number two seed. Um, and then uh, losing in winners finals, winning losers finals, and then um, losing in grands to the number one seed. Uh, it's just the number one seed at the time was um, Wild Card. Uh, Wild and Alucard. <laughs> that was before I ever played SM, and I just barely started playing Link to the Past, actually. I, I just I just think it's funny that we have like the exact same situation, except it's the number one team that's different, and <laughs> the number two team's still in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Solsky doing a hair pot to... Uh get to the top four faster to go get his small key from wherever it is in the top. Yeah, I mean, if if you can do Harapot fast, it's the fastest way to go. Uh, Solsky does all those pause buffers. I'll leave it at that. Or excuse me, select buffers. You know, I I got second place so many times in tournaments last year. I'm I'm quite happy to uh, to leave that honor to Team Parts right now. <laughs> so I, three of those were against Aussie. So yeah, that's how it goes. And uh, Team Corn Dog was your only weakness in the bingo. Yeah, so let's see. Solsky's got two dungeons to do. He's got that mire and skull. Plus, he still's got to get his. Oh, he still got to get his quake and Fantoon and Ridley. Uh, Aussie's got 
he's doing the pod and Eastern Skull and Ice. So, yeah, I, Aussie's definitely ahead. Probably a good five minutes just having to go, you know, through Attic, getting Sky Missiles and everything. I mean, Solsky's got high jump and speed. So he's going to blitz through it. It's going to be very quick. Uh, but he's still got to just take all those steps. You know, having to come here, like... And then just Aussie oh, so never had to do any of that swamp stuff. I mean, basically, Solsky... That <laughs> sound mean. Solsky wasn't being useful since uh, finding uh, that red cane. You know, he kind of went off his own, own little path on, on stuff that didn't really play out. But, I mean, that's just the way it happens. Like, you know, a lot of times, just like... I mean, you're still clearing stuff. Like, Aussie wouldn't have made... I don't think he would have made that hair play if, you know, Solsky hadn't cleared, cleared out all this other stuff for him, so... It was still useful, but just stuff Aussie doesn't have to do. Meanwhile, we do have Andy checking... Yeah. I mean, once you find that grapple, that's, that's the only thing you... You have to chase it down, right? And then it's just natural to do plasma here. Yeah, Team Farts is pretty much mirroring exactly what Crockpot was doing, except uh, just a couple minutes behind. The thing is, I think that um, doing these completely separate bad checks makes sense. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I think, I mean... Well, like, no, no, I'm not done. It, I think it makes sense if you're feeling like you're in a strong position already. Um, I don't think Team Farts has, like, the equity in the seat to back up them doing these completely different checks. Um, I think it actually would have been, like, it would have been the play, so to speak, for them to be like, okay, we're probably behind because of the Quake thing and other things. So let's just both do Swamp and, like, just bet it Swamp. Um, then we both, if it pays off, then we both did the thing. And we don't have to worry about Desert. Yeah, it's, I don't know, like, I feel like meta... Uh, Especially, I don't know if Andy's that much of a fan of like meta gaming. Just he's been around for so long, and there's so many times he's like, "Oh, I should lose this," and then he wins. Like, I, I feel like Andy likes to just play it straight a little bit more because you can just so second guess yourself. So, I mean, something could have happened see, to them too. See, they could have died. I, see, I, I I meta all the time, and yeah, you know, I get punished for it sometimes. Um, but lately, I've just been like, you know, it's not worth it. I should just like I've won so many races I shouldn't have. I should just trust it. So I've done that same line of thinking it has not worked out for me so far yeah, like I, I mean I, I started losing a lot more <laughs> so i stopped mitigating uh rando can drive you nuts like i just i mean I, we did pretty well in the co-op tournament i started playing the solos again and i just last location stuff like seven times in a row and i'm like okay <laughs> like it, this game can drive you nuts yeah you can't you really can't always win um well i guess unless you're crockpot I, I but really i think like this oh hey ice beam this goes but oh my god really ice beam at shaktul that's did solsky dip before he actually saw this i think he did yeah if you're gonna if you like if you made this check and you saw ice beam you might as well keep it it does speed you up enough for metroids that i think it's worth it to keep but yeah um but like yeah this mode i think it, it's harder to upset people in it Oh, yeah, actually, I just, Ice Beam was on chat. I mean, obviously, we saw this entire seed, but that made it, like, very unlikely to be breakable. Yeah, the only way you're breaking out is um, Crystal Flash Clip or uh, X-Ray Climb. I think we saw X-Ray on some people. I'm not sure. I think it I think Yeah, X-Ray was some, I think it was, like, a Gnet or something. Uh, Ivan did not watch Cutie's uh, random only Samaria tech in uh, Swamp <laughs> Skull Woods video. Yeah, hey, it's not random only. It wasn't a low percent route for a while. It wasn't. It wasn't a low percent. You're right. It was low percent. I was very happy about that. I was too. I was like, that's great. <laughs> well, that's that's the only reason why random tech is ever found is that some bizarre, <laughs> bizarre route comes up and people actually start optimizing those rooms. Yeah, I like when that started being a thing. I I was doing it in basically every seed, and commentary never noticed. So, I th see. I thought I was the only one who did it. I, I shouldn't have underestimated you. I'm sorry. Uh, 
Uh, I guess Farts never checked X-Ray. So yeah, I guess if you, you we did say this must have been Asa who checked it. I completely missed it, but yeah. Oh, and Soul Skate doesn't have to do Croc because you know they got to the end of the seed basically. Yeah, ninety five fifty five. Yeah, exactly. I think that's why I said finding it early. You just know you have to. At that point, I just start gobbling up missiles, right? And just be like, ah, I'll be fine. Like I said, uh, I, I gobble up ammo and energy tanks until I have Gar Varia and charge. I start, I mean, I don't need E tanks without charge, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, those are the two things. So if you get those both early, you know, then it's like, all right, goodbye ammo. I don't care anymore. Seems appropriate for Thanksgiving. I guess we actually have a 50-50 uh, Canadian American divide here, don't we? Uh, on, on yeah. comms and on comms and in. It's pretty funny. I, I guess that means I'm rooting for Crockpot. I think I don't know. Maybe our trackers push it over to US. Probably do, yeah. Yeah, and Farts had never... It's actually surprising Farts is doing... You know, they did some really bad checks when they still had this hanging, so... Yeah, so sh shoutouts to uh, Sanders and uh, Ace Zero for tracking this race. Um, it done a pretty good job uh, catching and highlighting stuff that we haven't, so that we have the correct information. Yeah, we rely on them so much, and... Ooh! Uh, Solsky gets in a rage. But yeah, the trackers, especially on four, like we said, it's it's so hard for us to keep track of four people. We have the trackers just dedicated to looking at, making sure they get all information, keep us keep us honest. So I uh, definitely couldn't do it without them. That is a very red fan tune. Also, of course, follow the runners. Um... Almost half of the runners are really good at this game. <laughs> we just need everyone here to cut Ivan. Uh, maybe someday. You're only, what, 20 seconds off? I mean, I guess you actually have to run. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like, you know, it's new route. So that doesn't mean as much. Oh, yeah. Silver is where in our ship. Oh, yeah. You know, that's actually... Especially with just having the Master Sword with the Silvers there. I I'm... I think I Not honestly... Even... Yeah, I now I'm like even earlier. more upset Solsky didn't do this earlier. Right? Yeah, just do because it's going to speed you up on your. If you had tempered sword, okay, like temper silver versus temper don't really save you much time on, on most bosses, but it's just going to save you time on bosses. Like sure, like you might have to do attic without knowing it, but silvers are going to speed you up enough that it's going to pay you back that time. So yeah, uh, with Silver's being there, I think you should just even even before knowing 100% knowing Quake. But as soon as you definitely knew Quake, yeah, just come here and get your Silvers. I don't know. It's honestly like for a lot of these plays, um, like when I when I watch um, when I when I watch these top players, um, there's still stuff to pick at, like stuff that um, you could argue they really didn't make the correct choice in a lot of places. I mean, it's um, definitely. Like we were saying, when you're we're call, you like you're not only keeping track of everything in your seat, your entire you're keeping track of your entire partner seat in your head. Yeah, which you're, we get to do for free. We get to just watch and we right. get to see both their screens, but they don't. They're busy playing their own game, and their partner has to tell them things, and you can forget things your partner has told you. So it's not, it's yeah. not free by any means. And like you're just making a bunch of calculations. Like, is this actually faster? Maybe you know, maybe it is actually more valuable for us to push information sooner blah 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 like again like i like you said i approach it mostly from the speed runs perspective where it's like silver's fast go get like you know like it's 
like, yeah, those are fast. Go get those things. Uh, There's a lot of parts where it's like it's actually too much brain power to make the calculation at the time yeah, you're doing it instead absolutely. of like like figuring out. But you, you have to figure out something to do that's not terrible is your main priority. So um, you might not pick the correct thing, but as long as you're not picking like the worst thing that screws your team. Yeah, I mean, like we're still finding minor like routing optimizations in the vanilla speed run of these games. And like every different seed is basically Wait, we different. Are? Yeah, I mean, like I'm saying like minor stuff, like uh, I mean, maybe, maybe not for the main categories, but especially like the weird categories, like there'll be route changes and stuff all the time. And to, and basically every seed is its own speed run. So to be able to get the perfect routing the first try blind, you know, that's not really possible. Well, blind is it a route. You just get the big key and you go to the side of a... the back. Jesus. We made it. So, we made it an hour and 54 minutes. <laughs> We were doing so well. Well, I, I actually had a race to commentate for those hour and fifty more minutes. I didn't uh, have time to think of bad jokes. Uh, so yeah, grand finals. Um, happy to be here commentating with Duck and. Uh, giving all of these runners uh, the respect that they deserve. Yeah, I mean, th this really could have gone, I mean, this really could have gone everyone. Like I said, when uh, Crockpot took the, the winner's bracket, I was just like, they became the favorite just because, like, all the teams at that point were so good. Like, anyone went going 2-0 against anyone at that point was going to be unlikely. So the fact that they just, they had the easiest path made them the favorites. And, uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to basically win this coin flip, honestly. Like, I really feel like these are coin flip matches. Uh, despite Crockpot going to probably go 2-0 and here. Um, yeah, they're just so close. It, it just didn't, you know, Ivan had that little problem there. Uh, I, I just feel like, from the most part, until, you know, maybe you get to the Swamp stuff, but that's pretty late game. Uh, I, I feel like Crockpot played this one really well overall. Like, And they're just really strong players. It, it's really hard to get any sort of edge. Yeah, the thing I liked, like, in retrospect... Um, I criticized it at the time, but Solsky's uh, decision to not dip front of Turtle Rock, um, I think was really calculated. And it's like, yeah, okay, I've calculated, we have calculated that um, even though Fire Rod could be there, I don't want to take the time to do it. So I'm going to go and do Spike Cave. And then when Aussie gets the cane, he'll go and check it. And yeah, if I, Fire I Rod's there, then we win. Um, but then th other, other than that, I'll just go and do Rest they may have, they may have even calculated that when I was saying like oh I, if I was Aussie I've just gotten the the, the cane they may have calculated that entire thing beforehand honestly uh, that's that's entirely possible and like like Solsky and Aussie are you know really smart rando players uh, like that's something I could definitely see them thinking ahead but yeah we can see like at this point like I said Aussie is uh, pretty far ahead I mean he's already in GT Solsky still has to do his Ridley. Uh, but he, but Solsky is, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I, I uh, Farts is also in go mode now. I missed when they actually got that fire rod, but they're definitely, Solsky's ahead of, of both these guys so easily, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, a, like, a lot of it was just the, I think the early routing from Crockpot was better, and then the uh, incident with Ivan just... There was so much opportunity, even though it only cost Ivan like a minute, I guess like two minutes total to come back for it. There's just a lot of opportunity cost in that too. Uh, you know, that Andy kind of had to like carry a little bit more weight, trying to make up some of that time as well. And then they kind of converged in, in Upper Norfair at the end there, which was a little awkward. So just the early routing, I think really kind of seal, seal the deal on this because Crockpot ended up full clearing. They just full cleared faster and more efficiently. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Like that's that's why it like really hurts to make a mistake because if you end up with the seed, that um, it ends up being not nice and you have to full clear. And every mistake, every single mistake you made, pretty much matters. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the kind of the way I play is I just kind of assume everything's going to be full clear and just try to do that as efficiently as possible because you don't know when things are gonna pop right it's impossible to know yeah i i personally when i play i don't necessarily assume full clears and that gets me really good wins sometimes uh but also gets me into trouble other times um there's a lot of different styles of playing 
so. Yeah, mine's clearly crap. <laughs> yeah, I work sometimes, I think. Um, that, it does it. <laughs> it's the problem is it never works. I, I, I feel like you get. I feel like you get pretty good weekly finishes. Um, I'm like, always like second on average is the thing. I never win. <laughs> I literally won once all last year, and it was one I definitely should have. Shouldn't have. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, it's also it's also kind of a difference in play style. It's like like personally, when I play weeklies, I play to win. Um, yeah, I play weeklies like the one we ones. I think that's part of the problem. And it's just it's just a different play style. It's just a different goal. There's a lot of different things you can do. Yeah, I suppose that's part of it, where I play pretty, I don't want to say safe, but like pretty standard that like in weekly, someone's always going to like kind of key on, you know, a really good route over me. Oh, yeah, I see heading up the GT right now. The GT. Yeah. Um, the GT. So, some people in chat didn't know he did some extra checks. Um, to, uh, to look for another sword or uh, yeah. ice beam since they don't know about it. And this is this is the main thing that I like. Uh, I know people go back and forth and they say like, oh, like uh, first or last to finish over average time means like your go mode execution doesn't matter. My counter argument to that is that when it's average time, when you're in go mode, it's no longer co-op, right? Because there's nothing, you're just incentivized to finish as fast as possible, right? Whereas here, it's like, okay, the other person can still look for stuff, you know, there's, I feel like there's a lot more that goes on, uh, you know, trying to help your partner out and everything. I suppose the only thing in SMZ3 where it would still be co-op is if your partner didn't have ammo, right? And then it might make sense to look for it for them. But yeah, it's just like, oh, you're in go mode. You might as well just get off the call at that point. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think there's potential flaws with both systems, but you really have to pick one of them. Um... Because the flaw with, um, like, the, the thing that people criticize here is the flaw, which is, like, um, in some seeds, it can play out that, yeah, your first player is way ahead, and it could be just based on luck, because they just decided to do a really bad chain of items first, and it was required. Um, and then they have nothing useful they can do for the next 20 minutes. Um, a lot of the seeds, that happening can be avoided in your job, as yeah, like that, which is the reason that I think this mode works. Um, but a, li a Link to the Past Randomizer League generally uses um, average time, which I found I don't enjoy playing as much. Yeah, I don't I don't either. I, that. Um, I, I also feel like there's in this, like we said, because it's like optimal to actually like be close to each other. Uh, when I did average time, uh, when I was playing with my partner, it was just like, we're both just trying to do go it as fast as possible, right? And it's just like, if we so happen to find op information that's useful to our partner we'll tell them but it's just like i also feel like there there was a lot of like diving the same dungeon type of stuff because you just were looking for i don't know it, it i just the meta just seemed way off to me i like yeah it wasn't nearly as good but i, I don't think co-op is good people don't play the co-op in that format enough because like co-op basically only happens when league happens and the occasional like janky tournament um, and it's like people play and practice for average time for like one week and then they don't do it ever again. Yeah. Whereas here we, we have a very established way that we do co-op and there is definitely an in-season for it where it happens more often. But like, um, uh, even though our meta isn't as established, we do have some meta at least. We we, we have players yeah. that know what they're doing. I think I think this tournament really pushed it forward a lot too. I think... Uh, I mean, because you saw like the last, like last one was like 2018, right? Like before I was even playing. Like I feel I like the entire say meta... before I was born, but that's very not correct. <laughs> that is very not correct. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I just feel like, and not only the meta for SMZ three in general, but like I feel like people. I mean, we had so many practice. Like I feel like all the top teams were just practicing every day. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like it, it definitely came a long way in this tournament. I see fighting Ganon on Master Sword. That's always that. This is one of the other reasons I like co-op because um, you are checking less of those junk items. You tend to finish these on low percent a lot more. Um, so I think co-op also really 
I feel like co-op rewards execution a lot more than than solo. The solo seeds are just like the skill floors come up so much that these seeds are just so long, and you can just last location something and lose like an hour <laughs> because there's just so much in this game that uh, I, I feel like co-op really rewards execution, rewards you know team play and all that kind of stuff in this. So, like I said, I, I think it's the best way to play this is hard mode co-op. Yeah. Um... The, the team aspect, like for me personally, I don't, I don't like that being the focus of like every random race of this I do. So I, I like having both available still. Yeah, I'm not saying let's never do a solo again. I just think co-op is better. I think, I think it solves a lot of the problems of SMZ3 in general. Just, I mean, the length being the number one. Like there's, there's when I play solo, I just feel like I'm wiped out afterwards. When we're doing the co-ops, like. Almost every if we finished at two thirty, it was long. I mean, we're at two o four here for these guys, you know, and they're they're just playing out the string here. You know, it just uh, it just makes it feel like less of a, a slog <laughs> so much. Yeah, so Ossie has finished up Ganon. Um, yeah, he's gonna get I, a one twelve here. Something. Oh no, ice beams like one and thirteen, one fourteen maybe. I do agree on. The aspect of, um, I don't remember what I agreed to. Um, oh yeah, you have to put the lower equipment at the end. Um, in SMZ3, I feel like you end up with much more equipment in both games. Um, it can depend, like, in SMZ3 because, oh, no, um, <laughs> because, what did he do? He laid the power bomb and he was wall jumping up and he ended up door checking the door back into... <laughs> Oh, I've definitely done that. Yeah, because when you um, when you go into uh, spin jump pose um, and you press the opposite of the wall, the game checks it. Uh, the game checks to see if you're in contact with the wall there to do oh. a wall jump, and it counts as touching the door tiles. So does Andy not know about the in room jump here? Uh, I don't know. It is like one of the more. Like most SM only rando players will know it, but SMZ3 maybe not. It's like well, it, SM makes up so much less of the game that it's like it's you're studying stuff that might not I, come up. I was like, it was actually more because before we put that refill room in, that was the only way of doing it, um, right? Because you didn't have the screw attack jump from uh, like the RBO jump. That's true. So yeah, that's been. A, I'm surprised Andy doesn't maybe just forgot or something. I don't know. That that is that feels like pretty standard tech to me. So. But uh, I mean, Andy's a man of many talents, so um, he'll, he'll play these tournaments and they'll kind of disappear from the scene for a little bit. So, yeah, I, um, Ivan does not. Ivan does not play, uh, does not race randomizer all that much, except when uh, co-op tournament in particular. I think he tends to do more. Um... Yeah, he shows up for the tournament. Like, he's in the SG Live as well. Oh, actually, yeah, he was around for the 2020 1v1, so he he does all the 1v1s when they come around. For some reason, I forgot he was in that. Yeah, he actually lost to Andy in that. That's why I forgot. <laughs> this is... <laughs> oh, he beat no, Andy. He, yeah, no, he beat Andy. He lost That's right. A, yeah, yeah. He, lost a, he lost a pizza. So I'm full of crap. I see. Wow, I'm surprised this baby jump's still going on. This has been a lot of <laughs> iffy jumps. And at the goal line, <laughs> he would have had a refill anyways. I mean, I mean, this is the one thing, right? Like, anything Aussie does right now doesn't matter. Uh, he's just a mile ahead of Solsky. Yeah, see, it, it doesn't matter. His mode is bad. <laughs> Yeah, but again, the miss baby skip and it doesn't matter. Like, what's the point of even getting good at it? <laughs> I mean, he could be behind Solsky. Could he? I, <laughs> I have yet to I've yet to see it. I, I do like I do like the skills involved in doing the baby skip without wave, having to shoot out 
uh, the debris multiple times. My my first baby skip ever was actually without wave because it forced me to slow down. Like in a run. Oh, that's interesting. It. Yeah, but yeah, that was my first one ever. Was without wave. Um, I do want to point out when uh, me and Asi were did that one practice race. I I came in first. So Aussie has come in second <laughs> in this tournament at least once. Wait, in the in a practice you said? Yeah, we uh like did a partner swap thing for one okay. race. Oh well, okay, that doesn't count. Oh it counts for me. <laughs> I I did I did remember that happening though, that was interesting. Aussie doing a golden shower. Spacer SBA on Mother Brain. He did this in Worst Room of the Game, too. He really? Why? Yeah, I don't know. I guess. Why would you ever does... use that? I have Let's no see. idea when you'd ever I use it. I guess it's like. Inst oh, you know what? It's actually a good strat because it's like. It does 300 damage just like a super, but you're not using your supers, which you would want to keep for Ripley. If you have excess power bombs, you know what? Sure, but under that logic, shouldn't you just Golden Shower Ridley? Um, no, because Ridley, Ridley's says, a Ridley takes man. double damage from supers. Oh yeah, good point, good point. Uh, there's no reason to do this, right? Aussie's just memeing, like... <laughs> I... It, it might... This might save time if you do it well, but he's got ammo to back it up, so... I would, I would say that's like... I mean, Aussie's not the best SM player. I mean, there's obviously better players than him. He's a great SM player, but uh, the amount of just like weird, random stuff, like... Um, just in like just executing in randos like he's he's got to be like one of the best if not the best so i'll i'll do like the math breakdown here um it takes 120 frames uh for your sba to come out which is two seconds um and it does two particles uh for spacer which do 300 each so if you hit both of them that's 600 per like um 600 per, let's say, three seconds, because it takes about a second for them both to hit before you can charge up your SBA again. So 600 damage per three seconds uh, versus uh, charge shots with Spacer are 120 damage per second. So um, okay. if you if you hit them, then it's faster. Um, if you hit an average of 1.5, like let's say one in out of every four particles miss, that's still 450 per three seconds, which is 150 per one second, which is still faster than uh, charge spacers 120 per one second. There you have it, folks. I don't I don't think you expected to hear SBA math <laughs> during a randomizer race. But there you go. If I'm on commentary, you should probably expect things like You'd that. Probably, I, mean, I mean, both of us. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the minuscule link to the past tech and you can handle <laughs> space or special beam well, I'm, 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 like, I'm like there, there, there is there's a ROM hack uh, that uh, is Super Metroid Y faster um, that I ran for a while I also uh, tried it out pretty briefly um, you fight Ridley is in like three minutes and uh, the fastest strat against him is space or SBA <laughs> so there's like there's like a minute to get both of, to get two Spazer SBAs to hit. So, you know, I like Romhek experience because it teaches you these weird things. Yeah, SM just feels like uh, there's just so much. That, like, I've people have said this before, but like, I whenever I watch someone play it casually, I learn some new oh, random thing every single I time. I totally yeah. messed up and forgot that Ivan and Andy still needed a sword. Oh no. So they, according to chat, they found one in Bob's chest. Uh, Ivan did. Um, but oh, okay. That should have been a consideration we pointed out when they found Fire Rod is they still need a sword. Yeah, I mean, even if they had, they were still behind is why I didn't like kind of overanalyze it. Yeah, I just didn't think about it too much because like we, we the, the race was kind of sealed in Crockpot's favor. Yeah, already. but it, it definitely made it worse. Yeah, I mean, Andy is still doing his dungeons here while uh, Crockpot is just finishing up. But yeah, Aussie's gonna finish here with a looks like a one fourteen, uh, which or, excuse me, two fourteen, which is a really good time. I know, like Aussie has finished. I don't know if any team has finished sub two. 
Um, I know Asi himself finished with like a 150 something one time. I think it was there like was a qualifier, qualifier where they crockpot finished in 157. I think I know Asi. I don't know. I think like Solsky got like a 201. Or it was really close because that was the Maybe. one where. Maybe. Oh, well, well, no, I, that... so my my team got a T flat. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. So one. yeah, maybe. So I think that. they got. I think they got a 157 in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was one. It was like that was the one where uh, we got hecked on that one because like we thought we found everything early, but like we had just found Moon Pro early when Emeralds got it late, and like Team Farts was like, "Yeah, our Goma was checking Dark World map," and we're like, "Oh." But since right. we got Moon Pro early, we ended up doing a bunch of Dark World. So Aussie and Soul Skate high five at the ship. Aussie. Uh... Oh yeah, look at that. Aussie being... finished in first with the time of 2.13.49. Yeah, it's going to be about eight minutes behind for Solsky, which isn't, like, ten minutes is kind of a big gap, usually. Like, I'm trying to keep under that. But, like, eight's not terrible, especially with kind of how the uh, Like I said, we nitpicked whether Solsky should have maybe followed that uh, swamp play, but... Yeah, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, really good time here, especially for a full... This is, like, a 2.14 full clear. Basically, I mean, granted, Fire Lord blocked other stuff, like they didn't do pendants and stuff, but I mean, I think that was the last was location. Big here, I think. Yeah, to save time, but yeah, still 214 for full clearing the game is insane. We're full clearing the seed, you know what I mean? I mean, the only pendant, yeah, the only pendant they didn't do was Turtle Rock. And I just think it's funny that they pendant. also missed Space Jump. <laughs> yeah, they did, that's right. Oh man, I just realized Ivan is right here with Solsky. Yep, and uh, oh, Ivan doesn't have ice. Yeah, it's actually has ice. Yeah, it's actually closer than I I thought it was. I mean, Andy's obviously kind of on the, but the fact that Ivan was here, you know, if they had, you know, it was it's kind of funny that Ivan's far ahead because he's the one who made the quake mistake, but um. It's just the way the seed played out. Yeah, it's because yeah, Andy is the like... one that went to swamp. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Both the swamp players, the ones million. Yeah, but even with some of the mistakes, if they had just you know made a couple of different calls, like team farts could have. I mean, that's the thing of SMZ three. It's like one call can change, can be plus minus ten minutes easily. That 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 swamp like was the call. Like that swamp was like the one really nasty thing in this seed that they didn't have to do. It was avoidable. Um both teams ended yeah. up having someone that did it, but it was possible to not do it. Yeah, I mean, it's very, like, that's one of those things that, like, I think the other thing is, like, again, I, I know we keep harping on the Solsky thing, but, like, let's say, like, Solsky did do the wreck ship to Meyer thing, right? Maybe what you do is, like, okay, let's, we can do Desert and we can do Hera real quick before we have to make the swap call. We can just try to avoid the big, it's kind of like doing Bomber Tablet before Swamp, right? You just have one, one thing you need. And maybe you don't get sucked into that, but because Solsky made that, I mean, it seemed like the log logical thing, right? But there were still a couple things hanging on. You know, maybe you can send Aussie to do some of those things when, uh, you know, clean those things up first. So, yeah, yeah it's I just mean, do you, you play safe at that point? I think. Do you play safe and like maybe lose like maybe 20, 30 seconds doing extra flutes or whatever? Yeah. And then having to come back to Swamp, anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, all I'm saying is like this. I mean, this is a pretty solid win for Crockpot, but it's, you know, like I said, it's, it hinges on like one or two calls, honestly. Like, I mean, you can see Ivan's right here with, with Solsky. Um, if they had just played, just routed a little differently, made it, made one or two different calls, you can be saving, especially just one half of your call-up team could be easily saving five, six, seven minutes, you know? And like, I, we, I, we've said this before on commentary for SMC3, it's not, it's not really like, how close is it when they finish? It's how long was the game close, you know, for it to be a, an exciting match. Oh, I just realized Solsky's got to, uh, is he going to have to go back and refill? Because he doesn't have ice. Oh, wait, he, can uh, he can doesn't have charge, you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's going to have enough ammo. 
let's see. He's, he's so he destroys this one. He destroyed it at 42. 42 yeah, minus 36. Oh, yeah, he has Why to refill. Because it's Solsky. Oh. I don't know. Speed of a tight skip is pretty hard. I know you're not a, a fan of it. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of it. I just don't expect other people to do no, it. No, man, like, speed, don't you... You opt to not go for it in speedruns, right? Uh, what do you mean? I thought there was a speedrun where you did, like... I don't know. I, I, th I thought there was one... I actually used to go for it in 100% instead of doing, um, like, turning score attack off. Um, but my consistency for it, like, wasn't quite good enough. But no, like, I'm, I'm not averse to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying... Obviously, you can do it. I just thought... I thought in speedruns you went for, uh, like, the spring ball skip, generally. Well, I started doing that because it's faster, but I sucked at it a lot more because I wasn't used to it. Maybe I'm getting confused that you, you hit it down back. It, it's yeah, it's down back that I won't do. Yeah, I hate when all bosses. I had to go for speed zeb skip, and it really sucks. Like having to do baby skip and then speed zeb skip. It it's much more rare that it actually matters what type of zebatite skip you're prepared to do in SMC three, but co op does introduce more of that because you're probably on lower ammo count. Like for for Ivan, Ivan's ammo was a little better. Actually, no, he only has 50 supers, but his yeah, missile well, count's higher. With that, uh, Ivan's actually gonna beat Solsky here with Solsky's refill. Yeah. I mean, it, like, this is actually interesting, because if it wasn't for Andy going swap, I mean, Andy's, I think, pretty far behind at this point, but I think it was pos it was still possible for, like, Andy to have finished faster than... than like if Andy finishes faster than um, than Ivan, then they would get the win for this because of Solsky falling behind. But it's Andy getting sucked as a swamp. That was a lot of him uh, falling behind. And to be fair, the only reason Solsky is as far behind is from getting sucked into swamp. So yeah, yeah. I just mean like you know there 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 was there was an out. Yeah, they they lost it. Andy actually running out of arrows here is going to have to pick up some in this room. Having silvers, you definitely want those for Ganon. Uh, Aussie with <laughs> less time and a link to the past in SM. That's not seen very often. That is, yeah, I didn't notice that. that yeah, is 102. Really I should have taken a screenshot of my 38 SM time and hung that up on the wall. And uh, I think the next time Aussie's going to be playing SMZ3 is going to be against me on Friday. <laughs> so, joy to me. Oh, cause you, yeah, you're in his group. Yeah, we're in the same group. SG Live. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm uh, playing him first, just ripping that bandit off. I was pretty close between um, two of the players, at least. Yeah, like you said, it's don't be the fourth. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely coming into play here. A at least Andy has Ice Retarian. <laughs> you, you, you might still oh be able to God. come from behind here. <laughs> uh, if Solsky dies, you have to go back to the ship. Maybe he gets but, lost. What if what if what if um, what if Solsky took a gain and fall in Super Metroid? Duck has left the call. All right, see ya. <laughs> Oh, 
Clearly Ivan is beating Solsky because he had space jump. That's true. That's, that's a big help. Space jump is one of those, like, when you get it, like, there's a lot of times in SMZ3 where you get those move items, you're like, ooh, I got this, and you realize, like, all you have left is Turian. Oh, no, and he died again, and... Oh, it's <laughs> and, super unfortunate. No. I no. mean, he, he's he got to know, like, they, they can't be feeling good at all right now anyways, so... Wait, I even had three stars, what the heck? Just yeah, they basically had to, right? Like, because of the missing one? They had to find I know, because I, I thought Ivan found the sword in DT, and they had to... Oh, Andy probably... No, I don't know. Confused. Anyways, and, uh, Ivan finished in uh, T2341. Yeah, and Solskjaer so, right behind him. GG's to him being the first player to finish on his team. Yeah, and it does look like Andy is also going to uh, forfeit. Uh, just, uh, he's... <laughs> we've all played so much of this game, I understand not wanting to play uh, Mother Brain. <laughs> one last time here, so we'll we'll get all four of these guys in here shortly. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair enough. It's, it's also like having to redo Ganon. He's like, he's done enough Ganons in his life. He's fine. Like I can't. The end, like I said, the end of this is. I'd be I'd be down to have fast fast Ganon in this. Honestly, there's just the end game is so long. So I've I've been saying that too, but it gets rid of some of the like, I don't know, GT sword checks. But usually you don't need that because it's yeah usually. All right, Anyways, we are now joined by... Everyone. But At everyone. <laughs> but uh, All right. So, GG's everyone. Um, that's kind of a rough one for Team Farts, I think. Oh, Andy's not here. Hey, Andy's here. right there. He's right there. Hi, Andy. Oh. Hey, GG. Good game, guys. GG. Seat sucked at the end, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, same question, I guess, to both of you guys. The, uh... Why the the swamp call was kind of the big one. It was a little bit more uh, on Solsky on your side. Like you knew you had to get the quake at that point. You could have gotten silvers. Like it seemed weird to not just start chasing that um, that chain down, especially when you had like at that point you were going into the bad checks. When it seemed like Aussie was sort of ahead anyways. So we were wondering why <laughs> why you made the call there. Statistically speaking, Swamp was the correct call. Um, just with the amount of locations that we had left. We had a lot of ass left um, within the uh, the checks. Uh, like we had here at Basement, for example. We had, uh, you know, Plasma left. We weren't thinking uh, Shack at the time until I got uh, to the left side of Swamp and found Grapple. So there's just a lot of bad locations that Aussie can kind of clean up and that were very time consuming. And Swamp looked like the outlier. So if I got something in Swamp, it's, it's great. It evens this up. Uh, at worst, it's not there, and you know what? We're still quite behind. Um, I don't think it really factored in because Aussie made a great point when we were both in. Uh, well, he just finished housing tree, and we were like, you know what? Like if if he did swamp, then he's just later to hair anyways, right? Like in the grand scheme of things. So I don't know, like if it ended up being the right call or if it was just a bad call that I made, but. I kind of stand by it considering what we had ahead of us and i think it's just unfortunate that i that i was the one that ran into the flippers in that chain yeah and it uh, just and became awesome. really hard for me to pick up the swamp play because i had to like finish another crystal and then get flippers and then i could start on it um and it seemed like swamp would be the the right uh like where the item was anyway yeah i mean we were going back and forth debating uh, the call. I think the thing we didn't even actually know Silvers were there at the time when we saw you get Silvers at the end. To me, Silvers being in in, Swan, in uh, wreck ship tilted it the other way that I, I, I think chasing. But it, yeah, it didn't end up matter. And like me and Azure said during this, that like making all these calculations on the fly is so difficult, uh, especially in co-op. So um, yeah, I, I appreciate the thought that ended up going into the. Yeah, again, I think it's, the only it's, thing it's, that made the swamp play bad was that the fact that Grapple was there. And, uh, oh my god! <laughs> and I don't like I I hadn't beaten yep. Dragon yet, so there was no Same. reason for me not to immediately go to Dragon and be like, worst case scenario, Ivan is like ten minutes behind if if it's here. We were so, uh, we were so, so. looking for the Aussie Crystal Flash clip, and we're like, oh, we're gonna see Aussie Crystal Flash because he's not gonna bother getting grapple. And then like we we got the Shack to him, we're like, oh, I guess not. Well, I was deciding between that and X-ray climbing. 
Yeah. By the way, Solsky, uh, Ice Beam was at Shaq. Yeah, he just went Andy, Andy mentioned at the, <laughs> I the laughed game. so hard. I'm like, well, <laughs> I was like, Ivan, you're power bombing some Metroids today. And he's like, what? <laughs> I thought about it. I'm like, I'm, I'm like really curious what's there, but then in my mind, because I took the, the save pre Dre after the kill, I'm like, nah, it's reset. I'm like, I, my curiosity is like, I wonder what's there. And I just kind of crossed my mind for a hot second, but I was like, nah. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, I, after, like, go mode, he hit reset. But it was like, if you just went, like, roll just a little bit further, it's like, oh, Ice Beam, that's convenient. Yeah, I, I, I mean, is it I convenient plasma. at the point? I did plasma no. which had half magic, and I was like, there's no point in me getting this because I'm just going to reset. And then I just, like, kept Ice Beam. And I'm like, you know what? I don't even know if this is faster, but we're just going to leave Draga normally, or leave Meridian normally. And then I ended up doing Waterway and X Ray because of that. Um,. Yeah, that like the grapple was the worst thing that you possibly could have found in a garbage swamp palace. Uh, so to, to Andy and Ivan, did you guys end up changing how you played at all because of um, Ivan uh, missing Quake at Sky Missile? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not, not we didn't we didn't really change how we played, but it's just like once I got mitts, I like instantly went to Meyer because it was a crystal, oh, yeah. and I'm like, well, Ivan. Uh... <laughs> get owned i guess i want a uh, point of order i want to refer to it as ivan cuting at uh sky missile point of odor duck sucks <laughs> hey no it's andy we all know that sure it was in the announcement <laughs> i know i know but no one understands <laughs> i understood it no one so. okay, there's people we're talking to on stream here <laughs> i'm just saying i do okay you're in the club thank you yay but yeah, I mean, this was a this was a fun one. Le definitely less um, just what the hell, like your guys' last seed where you had that gravity. Uh, this one also kind of ended up being a chain, kind of a rude, couple of rude locations. But yeah, like early the early on, I think the the Ivan thing, um, but I, not not just that, but I think there was a little bit cleaner routing on Crockbot's side. They kind of had to lead into um, Dark World, and then just kind of uh, it was like. Uh, farts you guys kind of had to make a play at some point and then like everything you did made sense and it's so hard to like we were talking about whether you should metagame or not and um i don't andy i think you're not a fan of that but yeah the uh, crockpot just ended up sort of just being just slightly ahead for most of it and there really wasn't too much room to make a play uh to, to catch back up yeah it ended up just being awkward since i got very uh from retro we had Ivan do Brin Loop into Retro, just like, you know, to see if I wouldn't have to go back. And then there was like, Spring Ball was in Construction Zone, and then the glove was there, the book was in Edicoons. And it was just like really awkward to try and figure out like what stuff of that I should get. And like, you know, I couldn't really put the glove off for too long, most likely. So I ended up getting the bow and the glove and leaving. And then we started running out of checks, and I'm like, well, I think I have to go back and get Spring Ball, because I'm pretty sure we're getting close to that just being the last thing left. Uh, so it's just a lot of really, <laughs> like, unfortunate dead ends, I guess, early on. Yeah, I mean, like, if we were, if this is, uh, I mean, Crockpot, I'm pretty sure that was your guys' last location, right? And then Aussie still finished with a 214. So, I mean, that's just a really good time. Uh, and then, I mean, Soul is basically just behind because of the, the swamp call, and then swamp kind of teasing you. I mean, that whole flippers too <laughs> could grapple to nothing. Chain was just mean. It was very funny though. Yeah, we, <laughs> we had a giggle. <laughs> I wanted to see the crystal flash. I was so I, I, I wanted to see the crystal flash. I wanted to see if Ossie was going to bother getting the morph ball bombs at Aqueduct to do it. Um, Crockpot oh, also. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, me skipping morph ball bombs ended up being like a mistake because I was like, no high jump boots, checking GT, and I'm like, I don't really want to do lower Norfair right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, gross. I was uh, asking Solsku what was there as I walked by morph bombs. It's like, those would have been nice. And then I went to like lower Norfair right after and had to skip Mickey Mouse. That's... Because of that, <laughs> Olski skipping morph ball bombs. That's a become, became a thing, huh? What do you mean? I I saw it. And... Now nah, the other the one where we you uh, oh. <laughs> yeet it by morph ball bombs. It. 
Yeeted. Yup. Yup. Where did they get those at? What? When? When did they have those? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's my greatest regret of this tournament is not playing that one out. That one would have been fun. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said hell yeah. Yeah, I mean it was fun <laughs> fun tournament overall. Uh, oh, the thing was, was like, um, like stuff really piled on Team Farts in this one. Like they they piled into Crockpot's favor. Like um, getting the sword at Smith's and Team Farts not going there for a while. Um, like, you ended up in sword mode, uh, whereas they didn't. And it was just like another in, like list of advantages that they already had. Um, so it was just kind of um, some of it was just kind of too bad to see for a, for a grand final where like, you know, if Team Farts won, they could have um, had a shot at a second game, but just got kind of piled on in this one. Yeah, like I said, like if we make one or two decisions differently, and you can easily save ten minutes in this seed. Um, but yeah, I mean, Cro Crockpot obviously a very strong team. Uh, like they, they, they quote unquote left the door open a little bit on this one, and they still, you know, Solsky still finished at two twenty four, which is a outstanding time. So, um, just but yeah, uh, outstanding effort all around. Yeah. So congrats to them for congrats to Crockpot for winning. Uh, the entire tournament 2021 SMZ3 co-op clean Yay. sweet thanks guys yeah I, I'm sure you guys weren't expecting to to win but it ended up happening so how do you feel um great it's good to get another one under the belts my first like teams um tournament win with a solo one it's 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 good stuff uh, just big shout out to my teammate Aussie. Uh, <laughs> couldn't have done it without him, guys. <laughs> oh, you guys did Blair lose a quality, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, we we beat them in one quad. I I forgot. I okay, that was, I was wrong earlier because I said they were undefeated. And I died at Mother Brain, and then I well, no, we would have beaten you in that one anyways. That but was the, the, super the death ball. put the icing on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> I totally HP forgot. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah. No, just again, special shout out to Aussie. Couldn't have done it without him. Yeah. Good job, teammate. We made it. <laughs> yeah. So, anything you guys are looking forward to uh, coming up? Yeah. Uh, I just want to take the time to um, I talked to Aussie about this. Specifically, call out. Um, what was that team's name again that won the first uh, tournament? I don't even remember. Uh, but Wild Anaconda 69 and Alucard 2004, I'm calling you guys out for uh, a match between Aussie and I and you guys. And those chumps better show up sometime in November because <laughs> SG Live is like super packed right now. So, yep. Yeah, see so y'all. See so you guys in SGL brackets, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aussie, you got any uh, exciting matches coming up that you're worried about? <laughs> I sure am worried about the this. Voodoo, you put on me. What voodoo? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's called voodoo. normal mode. <laughs> did you did you tell Doc what happened when like he said the he sent you the DM to schedule the match, Aussie? <laughs> oh no, I didn't hear this. <laughs> yeah, so apparently his power went out when you sent him that DM, <laughs> <laughs> and then we had the power outages during the match. So yeah, you had like, I... a witch doctor voodoo going on, dude. Do I have like ions on me that I can transmit? I guess the so. Us you're now storm. your storm. You're literally cosplaying a storm. Wonderful. Yep. Probably your favorite X Men. The cosplay has. Yes. Maybe you're a beast guy. I don't know. What were you, what would what would be your X Men of choice to cosplay as? I I don't know. Spider Man. All right. Thanks again for the commentary, guys. Uh, GG's the team's farts, and uh, again, Cho Saucy and. Thanks. It was a it was a lot of fun. It was a great tournament. Looking forward to maybe more two v twos in the future. I really yeah, enjoyed this. The didn't format. take yeah. uh, terribly long, somehow. Well, you you guys spent a lot of time in the winners bracket, so you barely had to do anything. So. Well, I mean, like there 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 wasn't that much downtime. Like even <laughs> even as the team that went to like winners finals and lost, we didn't have to really wait that long for for losers bracket to catch up.
Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. That's actually surprising since we had like the, the maniacal hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Heck and maniacal. Well, yeah, I, I I had a lot of fun this tournament. Yeah, uh, I mean all the practice okay. rates and stuff we were doing like constantly with everyone. Yeah. 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 Shout outs to Paul Rear Bunny for making this tournament really fun for us. And uh we also got pretty far happy about that. It Heck was yeah. very it was very sad when we lost and then I had to play a solo seed. I almost cried. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like when I saved because I never would I would always go to Sank in the co-ops. I saved and quit the Lynx house and I was like, oh, I had like a little tear. Like, this is so sad. I'm lonely. <laughs> I don't I don't already know what's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just so I mean, it's just again, these seeds take so but just having someone to hang out with for two and a half hours is a lot of fun. And then all the, the talking that everyone was doing, all the, the trash talking. It was a great tournament, so it was a lot of fun. Hopefully there's another co op sooner than later. Because I, I think this is one of the most fun ways to play this play this game. So But yeah. yeah. I think that probably wraps it up. So um yeah. thanks everyone for watching. Uh, that's it for this tournament, but, uh, we've got SMZ3 for SG Life coming up, um, which, uh, matches for that in group stage are not really getting restreamed, but, uh, Come if you want to on Friday and put strain, strain on his stream for me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I will put a link in the chat if you want to, um, see the matchups that are scheduled um if you'd like to watch them on your own um but yeah sg live week of um i think it's november 5th to the 14th basically is um when all the like um when we're at like top 32 for most of the games and like all the main restream action is gonna happen yeah i think that pretty much does it for us uh thanks to everyone for watching thanks to the uh tournament organizer for putting this on thanks to our trackers who i said keep us honest during this entire thing i couldn't do it without any of those people and thanks to the runners uh and yeah i think that's gonna do it for us as we will let you have the, uh, the final word here uh peace bye